Are you going to do the roll call for the elections? One second, Jace, please. Sorry. Okay. So thank you, Jason. Okay. So a few important reminders that this is uh, this meeting is open to the public via the web or over the phone. Board members only will appear on the screen while all public attendees will be on audio only. Everyone is normally muted except when given the floor to speak. All members of the public may provide comment to the board on each agenda item and during general public comment. When an agenda item is up, the board president will ask for public comment on that item. Use the computer controls or phone controls to raise your hand, uh, which will let the board president know that you wish to provide comment. Um, how to raise your hand if you're using a computer or a tablet, Look for a raise hand icon in the Zoom window that looks like this. Um, click on it and you will be put on the in the queue, letting the board president know that you wish to speak. The board president will then call on you to speak when your turn comes and will open the audio connection. At that time, um, you can provide your comment to the board. There will be a timer on the screen that will let you know your remaining time and when your time is up. Please do not go past your time allotted or your allotted time how to raise your hand if you're using a telephone. When the board president asks for public comment on an agenda item, dial nine, star nine, uh, to raise your hand. Uh, the raise hand icon will appear in your next, next to your partial phone number uh, and the officer's screen will put you in the queue. When a your turn comes, the board president will call on you to speak and open your, your audio connection. At that time, you can provide your comment to the board. There will be a timer on the screen that will allow you to let you know the remaining, remaining time when your time is up. Please do not go past your allotted time. Final comments, the meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our website at a later time. We suggest you click on gallery view so you will see the board members on screen at the same time and it looks like um, a checkered board. Uh, you can use the Q&A tab to ask a procedural or technical question but no questions about motions or board business will be answered during the meeting. Any procedural questions before we start? And then on that note, since I don't see any hands coming up, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the roll call. Um, Brandy is absent. Hazan? Yes. Okay. Mark Haynes? Driving late. Jason Hector? Here. Miran. Becky Levesque. Present. Thank you. David Lasher. Here. Thank you, David. Lori Choi. Here. Assad on the jar. Yes, here. David Balin. Here. Gabriel Kalanian. Here. All right. We are all present. We have quorum. Let's go ahead and uh, move forward. So we have a presentations from representative uh, representation representative of elected officials and city departments. Uh, let's see who's here to speak. Do we have any hands um, in from the attendees? We have one up. Give me a second here. Oh, Charles. Um, Charles, please go ahead. Yes. Hey, David. Hey, board. Uh, glad to join you all this evening and everybody who's listening in. Uh, Charles Navarro with the Office of Congress and Mike Garcia. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update and something to keep an eye out for something that we're going to be working on in the future. Uh, so a couple of things have happened. Well, a lot has happened, uh, but things that we're working on that we're moving forward. The congressman did introduce his first legislate, uh, piece of legislation. Uh, it's to uh, remove the SALT deduction caps uh, right now for businesses. It's capped at 10000 for you to be able to deduct those uh, taxes that you pay uh, on the federal taxes. Um, so the congressman's introduced his bill to remove that for businesses. Um, in addition, uh, COVID relief, um, it's all been rolling out right now with the new PPP loans. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can most certainly reach out to our office. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, today was the first day that it was opened up to businesses who initially uh, withdrew uh, from the first PPP loans. Um, and now today they have been able to uh, go ahead and pull a second loan out if they wish. Um, if anyone has questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to our office. And more importantly, coming up uh, around the beginning of February, 
we're putting together a big seminar that the congressman and we're going to have some small business committee staff that actually helped write this piece of legislation. Uh, they're going to come on and provide a seminar for any business owners um, and, and all the chambers and whatnot uh, to go over some of the nuances in this bill and to make and to answer any questions that some of the business owners may have or constituents of that of that nature as well. Um, so that's going to be coming up, like I said, around the beginning of February. We're still working on everybody's everyone's availability. Um, and then uh, the biggest thing, too, is we're, we're we're focusing on the covid impact right now. Obviously, it's a big deal across the whole entire state and across the nation. But more importantly, we're really starting to feel it here in California uh, with the with the extreme limited capacity that any of these hospitals are having. Uh, in Antelope Valley, we just had the uh, that first field hospital open up there with the AV hospital. So, um, you know, if there's any way that we're able to help leverage uh, FEMA or additional outside resources to providing adequate care here locally, uh, please make sure that we're aware of it. We'll be more than happy to act on it. Uh, what, that's what the congressman did. Uh, he, he reached out to the White House and we were able to get about 28 uh, field nurses and doctors out there to the AB hospital uh, to increase their, uh, their, their ability to serve uh, COVID patients. So we're always, we're always, we're always able and willing to, to try and do what we can whenever we can. Um, so just want to make that aware. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what I have for, for everything at the moment. We're looking to, uh, oh, here's one announcement. Uh, the congressman did get appointed to his first committee. Uh, so it looks like he's going to be assigned to the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, we are waiting to hear what subcommittee he's going to be assigned to, and that will really help drive, as I mentioned last time, that's going to help drive the focus of what we're going to be focusing on here in the district legislative-wise. Um, but it's going to be a great way for the congressman to make sure that some of those dollars are coming back and, and impacting us here locally. Charles, would you do me a favor and would you uh, let the community know what your email is if they need to email you? Absolutely. So my email is charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S, dot navarro n as in november a v as in victor a r r o at mail m a i l dot house h o u s e dot gov we appreciate that because then at yeah. least if you know if they have questions we can filter it that way i appreciate yeah. your time thank you so yeah. much thanks david oh, wait, i think hold on jason's got a question oh. jason go ahead my apology um, just a few comments and thank you so much, uh, Charles, for attending our meetings uh, regularly. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and the SALT deduction is an important issue. I appreciate you taking that on because that really, um, the homeowners aren't getting the benefits that they should be getting, you know, with, with this, um, the way it's structured now, but um, on the COVID issue, um, thank you for the information about the field hospital. Um, we have that on our agenda with the COVID um, committee we're looking into. So it's something we as a board are trying to figure out how can we utilize our funds to um, be impactful in our community. So uh, a partnership would be fantastic if there's any opportunity for that. Um, the wildfire issue you mentioned last time, that's an yep. important issue for our community um, here in Porter Ranch. We have um, uh, obviously Saddle Ridge fire, things like that. So I'd like to continue to hear from you and work with your office on that issue. Um, yep. And the, the vaccines obviously are very important, um, getting those out. So hopefully your leadership in getting vaccines out and the information out to the community um, we, we, that's a very important issue in my opinion. And, yes. um, congratulations on the uh, appro appropriations committee appointment. That's, uh, an honor to be on that committee and, um, congratulations to uh, yeah. him on that. Thank you. Yeah. David, Absolutely. I have a question too, David. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Charles. Uh, this is Assad. Uh, I have a quick question so that maybe you could uh, get us the answer by next meeting, if you don't know by now, which is yeah. uh, what measures will the congressman be helping PRNC with the Alicia Canyon closure? Uh, as you know, this is the number one issue for PRNC. And yep. uh, hopefully as we progress monthly, if you can uh, give us uh,
uh, the answer. If you have the answer now, please go ahead. If not, I don't want to put you on the spot. Next meeting is fine too. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I don't have an answer to that, but I believe uh, from the last month too, now that we're getting an idea of what the congressman's uh, committee schedule is going to be as well, um, I think we were trying to also arrange the time to, to get you and to get a group uh, to talk to him about that, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Yep. So, um, so Asad, David, uh, I'll be in touch. And if you guys, uh, if you guys have a group or, or um, uh, advocates that you guys want to try and present in front of the congressman, uh, we'll talk and we'll, we'll get that arranged then. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, Mr. you bet. Mr. Balin, also Mark Haynes uh, arrived four He's minutes here. ago. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Good night, Charles. Thank you. All right. Good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Charles, please go ahead. Great, thank you, David. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tara Vidani and I work for LUSD school board member, Scott Schmerlson. Um, with the start of the new semester, I just wanted to share some resources that are continuing on and some new opportunities with you all. Um, the first being that our grab and go food centers are still open. Um, they were open throughout winter break and they continue to serve three meals daily. Um, the closest location to you all would be Chatsworth High School. So I encourage you if, if, if you could use this resource or if you have stakeholders who are in need right now to remind them that the district is providing this resource and the centers will be open on Monday, Martin Luther King Day, even though it's a school holiday. To date, we've served 95 million meals. Um, so there's clearly a large need in the community and we're um, planning on providing this service um, at least throughout the duration of this school year. We're also continuing our COVID-19 testing program. Um, I know last time I was here, there was a question about if there was a difference in accuracy between the nasal and the saliva swabs. So both the nasal and saliva tests are PCR tests, which are considered the gold standard in testing. Um, but it, I was informed that they do recommend getting the nasal test because um, research has shown that it produces fewer false positives. So especially if you're symptomatic, um, I would go with the recommended nasal route. And the closest locations for COVID-19 testing in Port to Porter Ranch would be Frost um, middle school or Lawrence Middle School, and you can go ahead and book your appointment at dailypass.lusd.net. I also sent an email yesterday to, I believe, all of your members with information on how to go about doing that, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. I also want to let you know that uh, January 31st is the deadline for open enrollment. Um, in terms of healthcare here in California. So if you know any families who uh, have questions about how to you know, sign up for healthcare, the district does receive monies every year to help you know, low-income families through that process. So you can refer them to the email champ at lusd.net or the phone number 213-241-3840. That's 213-241-3840. And that way they'll be able to talk to um, someone about Medicare, Medi-Cal, um, Kaiser's programs for families and get registered before the January 31st deadline. And then lastly, I wanted to let you know that the district is doing a laptop drive through May 15th to um, collect new laptops for high school students that'll be graduating this year that are um, identified as foster youth. So, you know, when students graduate, they have to return their district issued devices, but oftentimes, you know, universities don't give them devices or there's a lag time. So we're, um, you know, seeking out community resources. Perhaps you work for a company that um, does, you know, charity work such as this. So if you are interested in, um, if your company is interested in donating a new laptop, um, the donations are tax deductible and I'd appreciate your reaching out to me. My email is tara.vidani and the spelling should hopefully be up on your screen at lusd.net. So with that, I will stop talking, David, but I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, thank you. Gabriel, please. Tara, thank you very much uh, for the information. First of all, I want to say we did the LAUSD COVID testing. It was very, uh, the process was very simple, fast, and we got the results within 12 hours. And everybody ran it professionally. It was safe. It was easy. It didn't hurt. So whoever's concerned about any of that, they shouldn't be. Just go ahead and sign up on the website and go take it. 
Uh, my second comment and question is, I heard yesterday that LAUSD might require all children to take COVID vaccination prior to going to school. I would like to know more information about that, especially the fact that there has not been any long-term studies on uh, any of the vaccines. I don't understand how the school can mandate or force the whole school district to take a vaccine that might or might not be hazardous for our children in the future. So if you have more information about that, I would love to hear it. Yeah, first of all, Gabriel, thanks for sharing your um, vaccine experience. I think testimony from, you know, trusted community leaders is really helpful. To your second question, I've been, I've been getting a lot of feedback about that in the last day. And as you may be familiar with, um, Superintendent Butner does um, weekly updates and in on in his Monday update it was about 30 minutes long and a student asked him if a COVID vaccination would would be a requirement to attending LUSD schools and that ended up becoming you know a headline in the Daily News and the LA Times and we followed up and essentially what the superintendent was saying is down the line when there is a vaccine that's approved for children it would become a part of the mandated vaccinations that we have here in the district. So as you might be familiar with, um, you know, by the time you're in seventh grade, you have to have the whooping cough vaccination and the polio vaccine and um, the chicken pox vaccine, just to name a few. So that vaccine would be added. But what I think a lot of people interpreted the headline as is, before kids ever go back to school here in LA Unified, you'd have to get the vaccine, which would obviously not make any sort of sense because there isn't even a vaccine for children right now. So um, I hope that answers your question. And if you have additional feedback, I'd be happy to hear it now, um, or you can just email me your thoughts and I'll get it to the board member. Thank you. Sorry about that. Becky, please go ahead. Becky, I know Becky has a question, but we lost her. Becky, She's trying to unmute. Can Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay, great. Right. Um, my question is this: What has the district done to prepare the classrooms um, for the reentry of all of the students? Are they putting up um, plexiglass? Um, what arrangements have been made, especially in, in, in all of LA Unified, but of course we're in Porter Ranch and a large part of our community attends the local schools. And I was just wondering, what have you guys done um, to get the classrooms ready for the students to come back? Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. And um, I, I know that Mr. Smurlson kind of touched on this the last time he was there and in the, I see that you have a and a box. So, I'll just drop the links to um, some YouTube videos that the district has prepared that kind of give more visual representations of how classrooms have be, been rearranged. So now, you know, in our in-person classrooms, which we hope to return to at some point this semester, there would be uh, no more than 12 students in the class at any given time and no more than two adults. So that allows for desks to be separated, um, all of the Ventilation systems in classrooms have been replaced to the extent possible for classrooms that have windows. Um, they, they could be open to provide greater circulation. Um, and then there's additional cleaning that would take place between um, the various cohorts. So uh, right now in LA County for, you know, there are some smaller school districts that had reopened um, and then unfortunately had to close again because of the high numbers of um, COVID cases in our in our county right now, but when they reopened, they um, opened under cohort models. So for example, you might have some group of students coming in the morning and then another group of students coming in the afternoon. So whenever there's a change of per, like personnel on campus, there would be extensive cleaning um, that takes place. In the videos that I'll drop in the chat, you'll get a sense of like what those cleaning devices look like. Um, and additionally, I mean, I can speak, I don't go to work in person right now um, because district buildings closed to, you know, help preserve the safety of staff. But when I was going in, um, you know, staff are obviously per mandated to wear masks on campus and to social distance and um, participate in temperature checks. So I will put that information in the chat box. Um, and if there's anything that I missed, you can feel free to ask a specific question about that. 
Thank you. Gabriel, is it a quick question so we can move on? Yeah, one more quick question. I heard the state might be uh, forcing all schools to possibly open in February. Are there any more information about that or does that qualify for LAUSD as well? Yeah, so thanks for that question. I can um, send you, uh, maybe send David a letter that he can forward to everyone, but the governor announced his plans over the holiday break and um, you know, superintendents of the largest urban school districts responded um, with concerns that, that the plan doesn't really meet the needs of um, urban school districts that, you know, serve largely low income student populations and that the, the plan that the governor put forth would, um, you know, be more beneficial to more affluent communities. Uh, so there are definitely concerns about the governor's plan. I know that the letter was just sent a few days ago so that there hasn't been a response yet, but there, there is expectation that the governor will put out um, additional guidance or maybe um, amend the efforts put out because the governor's plan essentially doesn't add new um, dollars to, to, to support instruction for school mm -hmm. districts. It just kind of reorganizes the state's budget. So, um, you know, I know board member Schmerlson had concerns around that because, you know, we still we still need money to to go towards instructional issues and not just um, taking money from instruction and putting it into safety issues. So I will um, pass that letter along to David so he can share with the rest of the board. All right, I've got one. I've got one uh, note on this. So I have concern of what the governor is trying to um, establish, as well as LAUSD. Is it not true that that all of LAUSD schools, even the front offices have been mandated to not enter the school grounds at this time? So um, the state doesn't have that mandate. So what no, happened- LAUSD. Yeah, so LAUSD on, I believe it was December 10th or 11th, Superintendent Butner announced that, um, and all the in-person like childcare and tutoring would come to a, to a halt because of the rapid rates of community spread within the county. I mean, it really skyrocketed after Thanksgiving and unfortunately it's only gotten worse through December. Um, originally that closure was supposed to go through uh, January 11th, which would have been the start of our new semester, but it's been extended until further notice. So that means that folks like our school administrative assistant. They don't have to go to work every single day in person, but I do know that many principals and some plant managers, they still go to school a couple of times a week to check on the campus, um, to maintain the grounds. So it's not completely deserted, but it's currently closed to the public and most employees. I think we we'll have one last question. Jason, go ahead so we can move on. Um, just, uh, I want to kind of piggyback on what Gabriel said about the vaccines. Um, I, I just want to stress to the board member, the school board member that they have not studied under 18, you know, and that's really the critical concern within, in, in my opinion, but, you know, science has to back up the vaccine. So a mandate I would strongly urge against because the science is not behind it yet. It's coming. So a wait and see approach on that is very important. But I just have one other important point, which is kind of a theme for tonight. You know, we want to help with COVID and we want to support our schools, especially our local schools here in Puerto Ranch. So if there's any ideas you know, you mentioned this laptops for foster youth. That's a, you know, something to consider, but any ideas, especially our local schools here in Puerto Ranch to support the reopening of schools and the safety of our children is something that, you know, our board can consider and hopefully support. So that's all I had to say. Thank yeah, you. And thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. I'll pass that along to Mr. Schmerlson and I'll just quick plug to Jason's point. I do know that Porter Ranch Community School has an NPG on 
this evening and yeah. the what they've requested would definitely help them improve their distance learning efforts so um so i and, and unfortunately the believe it or not we we've, we've tabled that item uh oh okay another, well, but thank you in february then <laughs> correct exactly i know we have one last question david please thanks uh, I, and thanks for being here, Tara. I, I think to add to the points on the vaccine, a lot of people don't realize that the Pfizer vaccine actually uses messenger RNA, which can actually attach to your DNA and alter your DNA. That's pretty scary. And that's different. There's some questions whether it does or doesn't, but it does use messenger RNA to do what it does, which is different from the other vaccines. And that's uh, definitely something that we need to do some ver further study on, uh, in my perspective, before it's mandated for everybody to have it but I appreciate the attention to that. Thank you. Thank you, David. I think that's it, Tara. Okay, thank it, you. It is a, um, someone. No, he's with, he's with an elected official. One moment. So he's going to, he'll be speaking on behalf of Suzette's office. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Javier. Good evening, Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council. It is such a pleasure to meet you on behalf of your newly sworn in Assemblywoman Suzette Valadares. My name is Javier Reyes. I am her district dir director uh, speaking to you from her district office, really her hands and feet while she is representing all of us in the state capitol. Tonight I wanted to concisely go through her committee appointments, the two bills of legislation she's introduced, and what's around the corner, as well as provide our contact information. Assemblywoman Valadares was sworn in on December 7th and quickly appointed to the following committees, arts, entertainment, sports, tourism, and internet media, higher education, communications, and conveyance, and two budget subcommittees, education finance, and public safety. Next, we had introduced two assembly bills, Assembly Bill 90, this is a foster youth protection program that in fact increases the age that the county officials who supervise the foster youth can put a freeze on their credit. It was found that statistically foster youth are very vulnerable to identity theft. That age would be increased from 16 to 18, Assembly Bill 90. Also, Assembly Bill 91. Your Assemblywoman Suzette Valadares wants to be very proactive on how we help individuals and our small business owners during COVID shutdown. Assembly Bill 91 is going to minimize the franchise tax deduction. Each year, small and micro businesses pay an $800 franchise tax. Suzette Valadares is proposing that we reduce that to $400 for small businesses and $200 for micro businesses. In addition, Suzette made it very clear, her assembly office needed to be available and accessible throughout the holiday season and the new year. We had power outages happening. We had backlogs in EDD and her assembly office has been hard at work resolving all constituent issues affecting the entire district. I also want to add, I want each of you to know that you can reach your assemblywoman anytime. Her district office phone number is the following. 661-286- 1565. Again, that number is 661 286 1565. I, as her district representative, want to provide my email to you. That's Javier, J A V I E R dot Reyes, R E Y E S, at A S M dot C A dot gov, G O V. Thank you each of you for what you do to represent Porter Ranch on the Neighborhood Council. Assemblywoman Valadares wholeheartedly believes that the government closest to the people has the greatest impact on the people. And we look forward to many more meetings and this is the first of many more conversations. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, Javier, you know what, I'm gonna ask, uh, maybe Patty wants to ask this herself. Patty, are you, uh, are you available? Let's see where you're at here. Because... Patty had a question, but I guess I can, let me just see. Patty, did you want to go ahead and ask your question? You know what, I'm going to go ahead and ask, ask the question. So Patty Gluck uh, with the uh, CAD committee, um, 
she wants to find out if uh, the assembly will be meeting uh, will be meeting with the Aliso Canyon CAG. Um, they've they've had a meeting with Catherine Barger and John Lee so far. Uh, they would like to try and uh, set up a meeting with you as well. We yes, I'm. I'm oh. oh, there you go. Patty, yeah, I, I didn't realize I was muted uh, or how to unmute, but um, yes, we've, we're um, the health study community advisory group, and we need to talk with all the lawmakers and make sure that they're on board with helping the community. Um, right now, we're trying to get um, several things done, and hopefully Moran is, is on is available in the meeting to talk later on, but there's so many issues we have, and including getting a chemical list subpoena going. So um, I really strongly suggest that if she really is interested in helping the North Valley, that she gets in touch with the CAG. Patty, thank you so much. I'm going to make that scheduling item a priority. And as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and email this evening our contact information, but more importantly, our scheduler's contact information to have that at least scheduled for the remainder of this month, if not the 1st of February. And thank you so much for reaching out to us. Uh, we want to be present, we want to be accessible and also responsive in a constructive manner. So we'll connect offline with our contact info to get that scheduled right away. I, we really appreciate it. I'm sure Porter Ranch um, Neighborhood Council does too. So thank you so much. Javier, thank, well, thank you for you. Uh, representing the office today. Have a great Hold evening. On. I guess we got, we got more hands coming in. Hold on one second. Very Hold good. Hold on. Uh, give me a second here. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, Ron the guy, please. Ron, go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? We can. Good evening, yes, Ron. Hi. Hi, uh, uh, my only question is, or, or, or just had a concern, uh, Aliso Kane certainly is at the top of the list, but it really would help if the, uh, uh, if she could uh, uh, work with the congressman in getting grants for the North Valley, high-speed transportation being one of them. Also, uh, the... Ron, can you hear us? We lost Ron. I made a note of that high-speed transportation for the North Valley, but also- uh, Yeah, I'll fill you in, Javier. Uh, the safety committee will fill you in and uh, we'll discuss it. I have two more questions from board members. Becky Thank LeBec. Um, first of all, Javier, I wanna, um, I had some correspondence with your office over the last week and a half. Uh, with you and Victoria Garcia on behalf of several uh, stakeholders here in Porter Ranch. And I want to thank you for everything you did. I got results within 24 hours. I got my questions answered. They got their questions answers and you were extremely responsive. And I want to thank you so much. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Becky, thank you so much for your feedback. We treat every case like it's our own. And Assemblywoman Valderas is committed to results and positive resolution. So thank you to all. Continue to reach out to us. We can assist you with EDD cases, updates on legislation. Let's save you some time in the line at the Department of Motor Vehicles. So thank you. Javier, Becky. we have one last question from board member Jason Hector. Uh, hi, Javier. Um, not so much a question, but um, just a few um, comments. Um, thank you for coming and um, Congratulations on all the committee appointments. Public safety is an important issue, education as well. And um, hopefully we can set up a meeting with your office or invite you to one of our reg regular uh, board meetings to um, you know, help you uh, get to know us. Um, um, we're very uh, excited to work with your office and, and thank you so much for coming. Um, and, and as far as AB 91, I think that's really important because, you know, when you're getting started with a business, you're paying 800 a month just to hold your corporation. And if you could 
lessen the burden on people who have these corporations. They're not making any money, but they're still requiring them to pay that um, $800. If you can reduce that amount. So I think that's a fantastic idea and your leadership on that. And perhaps if you come to the next meeting, you can discuss it further and uh, we can work together on that. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Javier, one last, uh, Ron, the guy did come back and I'd like to allow him to finish his question, please. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, I, I, it was the extension of the solar tax credits, both at the federal government level and starting one for the state and also opening up the self-generation incentive program, SGIP, to all people so that we could do uh, battery backups uh, as, as we begin to lose power here as well when the DWP was threatening. Thank you. Ron, thank you. I took note of the uh, high-speed transportation for the North Valley, the solar tax credit, and the South Generation, South Generation Incentive, and I'm happy to report your Assemblywoman Valadares works really closely with your Congressman Mike Garcia, and you need both. You need both federal and state at the table to uh, find the favorable uh, uh, solutions for uh, Porter Ranch. So thank you. We will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on. Thank you, everybody, for being so patient on this. All right, item number five, a long awaited. Uh, these are, we're going to have elections for the vacated executive uh, Port Ranch Chamber Council positions. Um, so I would like to, matter of fact, all board members, please unmute yourself, but be cognitive of not speaking over people. Hold on one second. One, more important, we have Gibson here. Gibson, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. Sorry for interrupting the flow of the meeting. I just wanted to see if I can just do one or two um, updates. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Hi, members of the board, um, members of the public. My name is Gibson. I am your NEA. Uh, just a couple of things. I want to touch base on um, so our department has, try, has been trying to schedule 101s with uh, our neighborhood council president and on the, the election um, committee chair, um, our election, uh, the neighborhood council election chair. Um, so we are trying to schedule one on one and that's something I'm going to follow up with the president. Um, so the intent of the one on one is to do to schedule um, in this one on one, we want to talk about election outreach. What is the strategy the neighborhood council is taking? We want to be able to discuss as to what challenges have you had in trying to do outreach. As you're aware, Facebook being one of the platforms we wanted to use to conduct outreach is no longer doing political ads. So we are a little handicapped. However, we are gonna be leveraging platforms like Nextdoor. Um, we also wanna talk about, show, it's something that's been mentioned by a general manager in the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners meeting. Um, we've also provided sort of um, a description of how much um, a detail of uh, where the funding is going. As you know, this year we, had, we have $400,000 in outreach um, so, which is about what, 4,000 to 5,000 per neighborhood council, which is not enough, but it's what we're working with. And we want to make sure that we can figure out how to be savvy with that money. And so I'll, I will be assisting this board. It's just kind of uh, implementing a strategy when it comes to election outreach. We want to get folks to participate, um, get more in tune with what's, what's happening. Um, another thing I definitely want to talk about, uh, it's something that's mentioned in the monthly profile. Um, we are also doing, um, we are informing folks about the candidate filing period, uh, making sure the folks are not behind on it. Please take a look at that. Um, it's something that's mentioned in the monthly profile. Also, we are uh, trying to collaborate with our NCs. As you may remember, when it comes to planning and land use, we want to make sure that our committee chairs are trained um, in planning and land use. And that's something that we are going to be following up to make sure that folks have sufficient training. Um, and also just, I, I urge you to kind of take a look at the monthly profile. It definitely has a couple of things. We have launched, um, we are relaunching the data liaison program. As you know, it's something that we've been going, um, we've been tweaking over the past two years and kind of just being able to leverage data uh, within the neighborhood council process. We've gotten to be more tech savvy to where we're able to um, assess data on a granular level, which is based off of neighborhood council. So you're able to see, um, what we've been, we've been working on. And that's why we want to make sure that we do have a data liaison. Um, it's something that we worked on with the 311 um, data. We have a website for that. It is on our website. Uh, it's empowerla.org slash data. Uh, just kind of feel free to, to play with that. Um, 
as everybody knows, uh, we are, uh, the vote by mail is gonna be how the neighborhood council election has been conducted. So please make sure that if you're doing outreach, remind stakeholders to sub, uh, request a, a, a paper ballot. I mean, getting them, uh, stakeholders getting a VBM. And just wanna make sure that everybody is comfortable with that. Um, if you have, have any issues getting your training done, please let me know so I can make sure you get access to our cornerstone platform. That is the way we are doing trainings. Um, yes, it's a little tedious because it's not, it's our admin team. Um, just, I ask everybody, just be patient with us. We're a small team right now. Um, we're undergoing staff changes as well. One, uh, one or two staff members is leaving the department. Um, and so we are just trying to make sure we can uh, be up to date with all our workload. And it's not intent if I don't give you, if I don't respond to you. So if I don't respond to you immediately, feel free to call me back. I will do my due diligence to make sure I am accessible. And uh, it's good to see everybody on the board. Uh, hopefully we have a good meeting. So Gibson, David Balin here. Um, I yes. wanted to let you know that um, I did speak with Nathan Singh mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, uh, and I said to him, I said, you know, I said, can you, uh, can you please, I said, can you let me know who my project coordinator is? Because he's never once reached out to us. Um, we've already moved ahead. Uh, we've had, we've already established our election committee. We're moving uh -huh. forward. Uh, and he says, and then he says to me, he says, oh, that's me. And I said, really? I said, well, we haven't heard from you. He goes, he goes, well, he goes, don't you have a done representative? I said, yes. And Gab Gibson told me that you were going to reach out to it. So we need the two of you guys to get together and just work with us because we're moving forward either way. You know? <laughs> Understandable. I think the one challenge is the balance between um, city clerk is the one who administers the election right. and the department um, and Dunn is trying to do the outreach. So we are trying to have the left brain versus the right brain talking to each other. So sometimes there's a hiccup where we can't collab in unison. So this is where when the hands cross each other and that is on our end, I'll definitely something I'll follow up with um, just to make sure that we have a sufficient, I do know um, on the city clerk's end, they were being proactive in, um, and going to our neighborhood council board. So it, it may look like it's a little late, but I'm gonna do my best to make sure that you know that we are both accessible. Um, but I wanna schedule the one-on-one -on -one with you so we can just kind of figure out what is our, what, what, um, kind of let us let you know what we're doing and just want to keep sort of um, keep record of what you're doing so we can kind of see where we can collaborate and what's working and what's not. Absolutely. So at least we at least I know who our um, city uh, project manager is on this election. Yeah. So thank you. So we're good. I think we're good and we're going to move forward. We have on our agenda to uh, vote on our allocation of um, funds to be utilized for our election uh, committee. Yeah. That's it for right now. Um, anything else? Jason, how do you have oh, a raise hand there? You're right. Jason, my apologies, my friend. Please. Oh, no problem. Um, as far as the 400000 that is allocated for, the, um, for you guys to do outreach, why not consider an ad in the Valley Voice? You know, because that newspaper crosses several of the councils from, you know, Chatsworth, I think Granada Hills, Northridge, there's five or six different councils that it crosses. And um, I would highly recommend that you utilize local newspaper ads in these types of local papers that exist throughout the valley and wherever. Um, I can bring that. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll, I can bring that up to our team. My, uh, my colleagues who are helping sort of lead the charge when it comes to election outreach. Um, I, and I can definitely follow up with you on that. I don't have a good answer, but I do appreciate it. No, it's just, just a suggestion. Uh, yeah. Valley Voice is good. And then I just one a uh, couple other comments on the data liaison. Um, I think it's important to interpret the data. I think the board, th this should be put on the agenda to discuss whether we want to appoint a data liaison because uh, you know 311 is very important in all of the things the city does. And 311 generates a lot of data. And I think from our perspective as a council, that's data that is very useful. So um, thank you for bringing that up. And um, David, hopefully we can bring that up in the future uh, because I think it is important to have um, each neighborhood give their input on um, the data. And uh, is Nathan Singh uh, from Dunn, and that's our project coordinator. He's going to. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, no I'm, he's, from he's from the office of the city clerk, and I'm the one who's from Dunn. And who's from Dunn? 
Me. Gibson. <laughs> oh, I know. Gibson. <laughs> okay. All right. I got it. Thank you so much, Gibson. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. I think we're good. And uh, let's see. No, no, no. Deadline 15th, Friday of the month. Okay, very good. Um, all right. So let's conclude. Let's finish up with item number five. Elections for vacated elective uh, executive board, uh, Porter Engine Neighborhood Council board positions. Let's start off with the vice president. Do we have, okay. I didn't even get to finish, but I'll go ahead. David. Oh, I'd like to nominate a side for the vice presidency. Okay. I second that. Okay, Assad second is, okay. I'll, no, I'll nominate myself. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Becky. Okay. I didn't, you didn't finish David, so I didn't feel that it was appropriate that I interrupt, but <laughs> I would have nominated Gabriel. <laughs> Thank you. Then Gabriel. He didn't have okay. to do it so, himself. So we'll, so we'll switch it up. Would that be okay with you, Gabriel, that Becky nominated you and you seconded it? Sounds good to me. Okay, then we'll switch Thanks. that up. All righty. Any other nominations? Okay. Then uh, any discussion? And let's go ahead and call the vote. When Sherry Darianian has a question, please. Sherry, go ahead. Yes. Um, usually we get to give input as, as from the audience. Um, I, I've known Gabriel Conlian since 2016 when he ran um, for the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council. He served four, actually, sorry, yeah, four and a half years hard time as secretary. That's probably one of the hardest jobs besides treasurer. And Gabriel was always good about getting the room cleaned up. We, we, we'd uh, clean up all the pizza and the mess that the people left. He's um, organized. He's a very, very good community leader. And I think that he's done a wonderful job as secretary. And if I was on the board, I would surely vote for Gabriel Conley and for vice president. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. David Lasher. Uh, absolutely respect Gabriel. Uh, great guy. Done a lot of work with the the the, the council and our community as a whole. Um, my support for Saad is based on his, especially on his expertise with respect to the interaction with the city, given his uh, local government experience and uh, his dedication to uh, working with the safety committee uh, and the like. And I am certainly. Uh, it's actually not even an easy choice. I do. It's 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 a tough choice. I appreciate both their. Uh, perspectives and their uh, their participation and their uh, dedication, uh, but I do support aside. Okay, um, we have Francis. Give me a second here. Uh, Francis, go ahead. I was just going to ask if you could please move Mark from attendee to board member. He was. We did move him. I don't know where he went. He was. A, he was a panelist. He's in front of us as Mark. I see him there. Yeah. Mark, can you unmute yourself? I'm trying to, uh, can you hear me? Oh, are you? Oh, yes. There you are, see? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, we're good. Um, let's go, I think we had one more. Let me just double check really quick here. Uh, Dave, I am seeing him as an attendee, not a panelist, if that makes any difference. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have him as a, because we have him as an, a panelist as well. Let me see here, son. One moment, please. Uh, can you bring him back over? Who do you need? Mark brought back yeah. over from an Mark is here. I'm here. Mark is he's speaking. No, yeah, I know, but he's showing. he's showing as a panel, he's showing as an attendee. An attendee. Because right. he just, called I, in, he called in on the phone because his app is not working. Yes. Okay, we're good. Brought him back over. Okay. On that note, um, 
Are we all ready to move forward for a vote? Well, you got Hassan. Hassan was before me. Go ahead. My apology. Um, Hassan, go ahead. Hi. Uh, no problem. I was going to second what uh, David mentioned. Um, I have the highest respect both for Gabriel and all the work he has done, as well as Assad. It's really a hard choice. Um, the only thing I would add is that I've seen Assad uh, during some of his uh, campaigning and uh, the interactions he has had with different folks and different levels. And I believe um, probably he's um, a better candidate in terms of uh, interactions and uh, making you know the the connections, especially to the city and various agencies. So um, that that's really the main reason. But both qualified candidates, and I really appreciate both of them for all the contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, give me one moment, please. Jason Hector. Um, I I just wanted to ask from a procedural standpoint. It's basically whoever gets the most votes, right? We're voting on both candidates at once. And then I just think it helps if you can um, give a little bit of explanation of the procedural. It's basically whoever gets the most votes, right? That's correct. Okay. I just want to make sure. Um, you know, I hate these votes because um, they're very tough. And in a lot of ways, the voters should decide. That's the way I feel. But well, when we have a vacancy, Jason, no, I know, the I know. board members have to choose. That's just my kind of feeling, <laughs> because Get it? the the thing is, is it's um, you know, I I hope that whichever way I go on my vote, that you don't hold it against me, because I know, <laughs> you know, both of you have done a lot of good and. Um, it's a tough vote, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. Jason, we're all one team, one hand that and two hands that club together, but we work as one hand. We are one team at the end of the day. We're always been one team, and these, uh, whatever it is, we're all one team. Thank you. All right. On that note, can we call the vote, please? Brandy, she's absent. Hassan. Hassan. Hassan? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Haynes. I vote for Assad. Okay. Jason Hector. Assad. Jason Hector. Assad. Thank you. Okay. Miran. Absent. Becky Levesque. Gabriel. Thank you. David Lasher. Assad. Lori Choi. Gabriel. Assad. Uh, for myself. Five. Assad. Gabriel. Myself. And I will abstain. There are there are five votes for Assad, three for Gabriel. Gabriel, Assad, congratulations. Thank you, board. I appreciate it. And as I said, it's going to be one team, and we'll always work together as one team. Thank you for your uh, nomination and for voting for me. Thank you. On that note, we are going to move forward for the vacated secretary position. Um, do we have anybody that would like to step into that position? I would like to nominate Lori Choi. I'll second, I'll second that. I'll second that. <laughs> I was first. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other nominations? Lori, do you accept the nomination? I do accept the nomination. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mrs. Secretary. On that note, we just saved a lot of time. So I appreciate all your board members. Uh, and just keep in mind, these, these positions are only, um, you only have to sit in this position until we have our next election. So this, we're only a few months away. So thank you very much. I congratulate everybody, Assad, Lori. Thank you very much. Thank you.
you. Congratulations, Lori. I'm sorry, Gabe. Vote. I think we still have to vote on that. That's you, you still have to vote. To All vote. right, then. My, okay. You know what? You're absolutely correct, Jason. My apology. <laughs> Thank you for call of order on that. <laughs> I just got so excited that it's yeah, over with. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd like to call the well, it's, it's hard juggling all these positions, so thank you. All right, Brandy, this is an election for Lori as a secretary. She's absent. Hassan. Yes. Mark Haynes. Yes, for Lori. Thank you. Jason Hector. Yes. Miran. Absent. Becky Levesque. Yes. Thank you. David Lasher. Uh, Lori. <laughs> Lori. Lori Choi. Yes, for myself. <laughs> Assad. Yes, for Laurie. David Balin. I abstain. Gabriel. Yes. Beautiful. All right. One, two, three. Thank you very Spiking much. TV. Let me check that out sometime. All right. On that note, let's move on to item yeah. number six. We have public comments on matters not on the agenda and, and within the preview of the board, not... So uh, let's see if anybody. Mr. Ooh. President Mehran uh, logged in. Oh, welcome. Just, yeah. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> All right, Miran, thank you. Um, I don't see anybody um, willing to speak on public uh, matters. So if you don't mind, we will go ahead and move ahead. Um, item number seven, this is an MPG for the Port Ranch Neighborhood Community School. Oh, well, well, well. Sherry Darahanian, one second, let's. Sherry, go ahead. Are you on item six or seven, which do you want to speak I, I, on? I want, you, you went so fast, I'm sorry. I, I need to make a public comment. Thank you for backing up a bit. Absolutely, please go ahead. Um, uh, my name is Sherry Darahanian, and I'm on the board of the Museum of San Fernando Valley. I've been going to the museum for five years, and they finally stuck me on the board because they thought I'd, I'd, I'd do well working with the Artist Speaker Series. And basically, what the Artist Speaker Series is, the second Saturday of every month, right now we're still in Zoom meeting mode, but um, it's a one-hour lecture of a local San Fernando Valley artist, and they have about a half hour of question and answers afterwards. And they're very compelling lectures. I brought my teenage daughters when they were younger, 12, 13 years old. And they even knew the artist before I did because it happened to be Debbie Wubbin who did all the murals at Castle Bay about six or seven years ago. So it's free to the public and I can send the, um, the link, I, can, it, I usually get the link a week before, but I'm in charge of uh, getting all local artists signed up to be in the speaker series. And uh, that's my new job at the museum. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I can put the link in the chat room um, if you like. I, as far as the new media, the social media rules that Bonk is coming down with, I'm not sure if you're allowed to uh, promote anything like this on Facebook, but it is a free community event for everyone in the San Fernando Valley. And I've been going every Saturday for five years and it's wonderful. Miran Kalajian actually came one time to one of our uh, artist speaker series last November and he, he thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, there is a question from the public from Maureen in the chat, right. do you see it? Yeah, I saw that. Why don't you go ahead and read it? Okay, this is a question from Maureen. What are they doing up there in Aliso on the mountains? A lot of work uh, for some place that is going to close. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, job, update Maureen. That that, right? Let's mute Sherry there. I'm so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's SoCal Gas. They came to the meeting, last meeting, and they did update uh, the community that they have two projects, one up on the mountain and also one down below. Um, and I'd be more than, well, I can send you that information, Maureen. What do we have? Jason Hector. Oh, I just wanted to um, tell Sherry, is it possible that um, 
we could let her know that Lori is the outreach chair. And if there's any events with respect to the museum, um, Sherry, can you can just email uh, Lori Choi or the board. And uh, if it, I don't see a problem in uh, putting that up, but. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. I, yes, I would, I'd be happy to put it on the PRNC Facebook page and the email blast that goes out. Okay, on Sunday nights. Very good, thank you, Lori, I appreciate it. Thank you. Sherry, I do have an ask. If you're gonna send it to Lori, can you get it to her at least by, what do, you said you receive it when? You said you received your updates when? Sherry? For Oh, um, oh, I know Lori, sent, Lori does the, the e-blast every Sunday. Do you need No, it? no, no, I know, but she needs more, more time, so I wasn't sure if, if, if oh, Friday would I, I be usually okay. Get, I usually get the notice the week before, so it would be like the Saturday before, like Saturday the 7th for the event is the 14th, the Zoom event. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, send me, send me what you Give her a little more time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, just you, you, go ahead and send me what you have for this particular event coming up. Yeah, it, it, it's not till February, so I'll send it to you in, in, uh, two weeks before. How's that? That's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. Now that we've done, moved on from that, um, just a, so, uh, just a footnote item number seven has um, been tabled. So we are going to uh, table it at this time. Um, the teachers were, um, they were um, instructing from the school, um, but that's what I was getting at with Tara was that they've uh, mandated that nobody is on the school grounds at this time. So um, I've asked the school to uh, consider just tabling this and they agreed since nobody is on the school ground at this time, but they will be coming back for this item. Jason Hector, go ahead. Oh, if we can just let the, and Miran is the chair, if we could just maybe let them know if there's needs with respect to COVID, you know, this is a priority as well as this, this kind of applies to COVID, but um, I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. David, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Is it okay if I ask a question? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I, I, did, I, I did a lot of research into this uh, item number seven. Um, my kids are all, a couple of my kids are teachers, and I just wanted to know these projectors, does every classroom have one, or or was it going to stay at the schools? And I know that you've tabled it, but um, I just was wondering if anybody, I, I researched the Elmo document camera pretty much in depth today, and I was just wondering how many of the school has. Um, I wouldn't know how many no. they have, but I think, you know, when Sean comes to the meeting and, and the reason why I tabled it was because um, I was under this understanding that Miran wasn't going to be able to make it tonight. So I'm very grateful that he was able to make it. So that's why that was one of the reasons why I tabled it. So I think it would be best that we let the, the school answer those questions because I don't have the right answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so item number eight, this is uh, from the election committee. We have a motion on the board uh, for consideration to approve $4,750 for the election outreach committee. Um, so let me share, share the, can you guys see the, can you guys see that? Yes, yes or no? we do, okay. yes. Okay, so during our election committee, uh, we, we discussed on how we could allocate um, certain monies. I, I know that early on we had discussed uh, putting aside $5,000. We, we discussed um, $2,300 for newspaper advertisement. And at the end of the day, if, um, you know, I don't know if Gibson's still here or not, but if, if the city is going to allocate funds for any of these items, we won't have to. Gibson, there you are. Go ahead. So we, we're talking about uh, budget. No, so I mean, the, as I mentioned, right, this is for the election, correct? This is correct. Um, so I, I think of the way the board is structuring it, I, the thing about it is we're trying to have them, we're trying to have both complement one another, right? I think, I don't think, I think the board should still do this and then we are going to do the addition. It's just that we don't have sufficient funding to do it in a robust robust manner. So if, if the board is considering to do it this way, I think this would be good 
um, to just try to be as effective as possible and go further with uh, what we have. Because as I mentioned, right, we only have 400,000 for 99 able councils, which comes to what, 4,000 something um, per NC. And so we, when it comes, as you mentioned, trying to do advertising, maybe hiring an uh, organization that does outreach, that's, it's not gonna be sufficient. I think this just makes sense if you do it this way. Right, no, it, I was just getting at if, you know, if we can utilize the funds from the city, it would lessen the burden on us, but these were the numbers that we had allocated so and uh, we don't have we don't have more funding to sort of cover the cost. That's why if the board takes action like this, I think is sufficient and it would be for the betterment of stakeholders. Um, so I think you should go with this if, if that's something a lot of the board members would like to consider. Thank you. Jason Hector, your hand is up. Um, I think the newspaper advertisement, if we run an advertisement, be specific to Porter Ranch versus something from the city, which would, might cover multiple neighborhood councils, which would be beneficial as well. So we can have both. Um, social media, I think at the time we had our meeting, we were assuming Facebook would be in play, but I guess Gibson, basically there's no Facebook, even though like we can't, we can't advertise on Facebook just to let's say boost our posts for let's say letting people know that we're having an election. You know, this is not like a specific candidate I know you're not Facebook and I don't expect you to answer for them, but if we put a Facebook post on there, letting the community know we're having an election on, on this date, et cetera, et cetera, is that, do you think we'll run into a problem boosting that post? Cause that's typically how we expand and, and I'll, you know, Lori, maybe you want to jump in here. Let's see. I, I don't know. Lori, I'll be ahead. honest with you. I think Jason, I think, after sort of last week, I'm not sure Facebook is in sort of the capacity to try to do anything um, in this manner. We can try, if they say no, they say no. But I, we do know when we try to do election targeting, um, it kind of got off our table because of, of what, uh, of Facebook's new policy. So it's just something that we don't know until we work with the platform. It's, it's kind of outside of, our, of our, our foresight, but if that's something that the Naval Council would like to do, I think they should, and then we'll. If we run to a hiccup, we'll run to a hiccup. But right. yeah, I'd like yeah. to give it a shot and try it um, at least for boosting posts, like Jason was mentioning. Um, the other uh, social media that we can use it for is next door. So you know there are other avenues of of using that those funds. But and that was one of the platforms that we are posts. using. So well, you've heard right. the board. You've already heard from everybody involved in the election. But I'd like to hear from the board members how they feel about this money being allocated. Board? Oh, Masad, go ahead. Yeah, I think the way it's structured, it's uh, well balanced. Uh, I'm not sure about the telephone advertising, but uh, I assume the numbers are not fixed. Uh, you could play around with the categories, I, I assume that. Well, that was going to be my question for Gibson. So if we if we approve it this way, Gibson, if we don't need five hundred dollars, say for the telephone advertising, we only need four hundred. Am I allowed to move the hundred dollars back over to like printing banners or flyers or anything like that? I mean, I don't think I think it would. Uh, um, I think if if the budget changes a little bit, the thing is, as far as you're sort of within the scope of what you're trying to do then yes, and if it becomes an issue, we can come back and just do a, a quick approval of it. But the intent is if there's money left over, there's not a problem on that. Thank you. I, I, can, I can answer that question as the treasurer in my experience. Um, we're allocating a budget up to 4750 and the description is a target budget. And there is some flexibility there. For example, if social media, we can't do Facebook or something, you know, the budget is up to 4750. So we have no way of predicting the future. But the idea is this is what we are projecting, you know, the, as far as the breakdowns. Um, but there is some flexibility it, with respect to that. But that is a city clerk question, not necessarily a question for Gibson. And the only thing just to be cautious of is if they if you need to use more funding in one section, let's say it needs to be more it could be, it, 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 would, it, it may be an issue where we'd have to come back to the board just to do a proactive, uh, uh, just to reapprove it 
hey, we spend more money. The only thing when it comes to funding budget wise, when you, during a, a board meeting, you can make an adjustment, lowering the amount, not raising the amount. That's usually just the issue is like, we will run into when it comes to funding. All right, so I think that's about it from the board. Um, do we have any questions from the from stakeholders? I don't see any hands no. raised. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call the vote um, for the approval of 4,750. Well, we have a motion. Once again, let me go ahead. And we have a motion for consideration to approve $4,750 for the election outreach budget. Um, allocated 2300 for newspaper advertisements, 1200 for social media, 500 telephone advertising, 500 banner advertising, 250 print and flyer advertising. All right, on that I'll, note, I'll second it, Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay, go ahead and call the vote. Brandy, absent. Hassan? Yes. Thank you. Mark Haynes? Mark Haynes? I don't see Epson? him in the attendee. That's okay. Yeah. Hello. All awesome. right. Jason Hector? Yes. Thank you. Miran? Yes. Thank you. Becky Lebeck? No. Okay. David Lasher? Yes. Thank you. Lori Choi? Yes. Assad? Uh, abstain. I'm a candidate. Oh, very good. That's correct. Oh, wait a minute. Matter of fact. Okay. And then, wait, okay. Do all the candidates need to abstain? Gibson. <laughs> <That's> very, <laughs> Sorry for causing that, but. Gibson, do candidates have to abstain? No, because you're just approving of what. Um, your monetary value okay yeah this is yeah this does because what you're doing is you're doing an outreach for the community and you're still a board member yeah. so it's not a problem of you you can just vote on this matter you, thank thank you very I'll much i'll abstain i'll stay abstain to be on the safe yeah. side thank and i you. will abstain gabriel i'll abstain as well just for the heck of it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, just a heads up before I, I just I know I'm not trying to sort of interrupt. You're helping. This is for election outreach. It's not for yes. uh, this is just to make sure you're doing outreach. It, it, there's no conflict. You're, what you're trying to do is yes. you're doing your part yes. as a board. You're not promoting a candidate. Exactly. So Gabriel and, and Assad just think that the money that you're voting against, this is to help your campaign to get outreach. Okay. We moved on. We have uh, five yeses. We have uh, one no and we have three abstains. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will move on. I love it. We're just moving along today. This is fantastic. It says break time. That's, that, that's your leadership, David. Uh, <laughs> all right. So um, it is, what time is it? Oh, 729. We're ahead of schedule. We're good. So we'll go ahead. Is everybody good for a five minute break? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Break time. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless America. <laughs> God bless the USA. <laughs> We're five minutes early. All right.
I think we'll wait a couple more minutes for Miran and Hassan and Gabriel and Jason to get back. Hey, there's Miran. Hi. It's got to be Jason. No, that was David for Jason. Nice. He's not back yet. There he is. I see Chloe. That's good enough for me. There's our youth representative. All right. Jason's got the full meal. Look at him. Look how happy he is. All right. I think we got everybody here. Um, let's go ahead and move on to item number nine. Um, and I don't know why I left off your name off this. My apologies, Asad. This is Saad's uh, discussion, possible action. Saad, go ahead. Yes, so this is the, uh, uh, the letter that we revised and I thank all the board members whom shared all their comments and revisions that went to David Balin. I also thank uh, David Lasher for putting all the uh, comments that uh, David Balin received together. And the letter right now, I feel, is uh, ready to be presented to our uh, uh, councilman, uh, John Lee. Uh, we almost incorporated, I would say, 99.5 of the comments. Uh, the only exception there was, like, in the second paragraph, uh, the, the committee, we didn't uh, revise that. So I wasn't sure, Mr. President, you want me to read it or... I believe, directly I, to I the, believe everybody the, should have read it before they came to the meeting. So I don't think we need to go over it again unless this is really a, a discussion on possible action. So we would like to go ahead and open it up to the board. And Miran has his hand up. I mean, Hassan, my apology. Hassan has his hand up. Yes. Hi. Uh, so um, I read the letter very carefully. It's a well-written letter. Uh, you did incorporate, as I said, a lot of the comments that were made last time. Really appreciate it. I think the tone is very appropriate. It's not insultive, but it does present certain facts about the, the fact that Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council and Porter Ranch community mm -hmm. does need more support from uh, our city 12 office. And I think all those points have been made very clear. So um, I fully support the letter as it is, and I think we should uh, we should send it to the councilman's office. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to go ahead and add to this. Um, I think it's a great letter. I would also like to allow the uh, let the board members that did um, add their perspective to this letter. I want to thank them wholeheartedly. Um, let me go ahead and um, Jason, go ahead. Um, I think Lori had her hand up before me. Go ahead, Lori. Lori, go ahead. My apology. Uh, I was just going to say, I've read it. I think it's very well written. I think it's the right step for us. Jason? Um, I want to thank um, the, the committee for addressing this issue. Um, just, you know, before this meeting, I was just hearing the noise from the, um, the racing. And I think a lot, the easiest issue to address is the, the mufflers and the noise pollution. So just my, just a comment. I would focus on that one issue, the, what is right. it, the BAM or whatever it is, Bureau of, yeah, just that one issue, because you will, 
start to deter these people. But I want to also, you know, say this is a funding issue too. And I think that they, they got rid of the street task force and, you know, that's important. So uh, I just have a couple comments. And my last comment is, um, you know, one of the, one of the changes I did request and, and I'll give um, Assad an opportunity to kind of explain because the part where you're saying that CD12 is essentially stonewalling us, I'd like to yes. kind, of, kind of have you explain and maybe support that point because I just feel like that's more of a conclusion than a fact. And I want to keep the letter factual without accusations and, and just so you know, I will support this letter regardless, but I just think the outcome will be better if we eliminate, I, I don't support accusations, but I want, if, I want to hear why you believe that they are stonewalling us. I, I understand they're not meeting with us and I agree with that, but that is sort of kind of, you know, taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I just feel yes. like, it might be better to leave that one portion out. I couldn't find where it is exactly in the letter here. I was trying to read. No, it. I know exactly what it is. Jason. Yeah. Which paragraph <laughs> is it? Is it paragraph five or four? I it's the know. one starting with while you and other associated CD12. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you could kind it's of on there. Uh, elaborate yeah. on that. Okay, I will. You know. So I'll start with the easy item. The muffler and the noise muffler. Uh, the task force has been trying very hard to address that. And unfortunately, some of the people's, they, people, they attempted to ticket, they were with license plates from the states that allow these modified mufflers. So it became a challenge because they have the license plate from those states and the ID, the driver license is from those states. However, the ones who were Californians, they had to you know, go and pay the hefty penalties their cars got confiscated and until they had to fix it and you know how it is. So that one, the task force is very well aware of it. The other point is, unfortunately, the safety committee, David, myself and Gabriel, we did receive three emails telling us that the CD12 staff will not attend committee meetings and they will not accommodate Say you know, yeah, but I'm that. I'm willing to switch it back if, I, if you I want. The seventh paragraph. It's a, like if you go three paragraphs up it, from the bottom, and it says, "For unknown reasons, it appears that your office has elected to boycott Porter Ranch and the PRNC." You know, I would prefer that to be stricken from the letter, but if you have an email that indicates that you know they said that that's one thing. emails yes three I, emails I just, I just don't feel like i haven't seen that they've boycotted us they haven't attended but you know that and I, I wish they were here today to answer it that's my comment I'm, i jason I'm, uh, thank jason, you so much and just yes. so you know jason i i did send both colin and ron rubine invitation to be at tonight's meeting as, as well again. So, okay, David Lasher. All right, I, a couple of things. I think that speaks volumes in itself, what you just said, David. Uh, the technical point, the, it's called the BAR, the Bureau of Automotive Repair. And it, it, it creates a, like a $1,500 minimum charge for someone to uh, uh, resolve that car issue. It isn't a simple fix and ticket for 25 bucks, uh, but it takes someone especially trained to refer someone to the bar, that's what they call it. Um, I, I worked on the letter, I, I support the letter. I did wanna make one point in association with that. There's been comments in the last few months about uh, specifically about a number of fatalities uh, that were referenced at uh, Wilbur Rinaldi. And I think if we were not to address that, it would look bad upon the neighbor council for not dealing with that. The fact is there hasn't been a fatality at Wilbur Rinaldi for, uh, according to the city, about 20 years. They don't, they don't have one even prior to that, but going back to like uh, 20 uh, to the year 2000, they don't have a fatality at Wilbur Rinaldi in any record. Um, if not even, and they said 
it's fair to assume there hasn't been one even earlier, uh, but it's been stated in a couple of meetings that there have been, quote, a number of fatalities and that uh, folks have uh, picked up a number of dead bodies from that, in quote, from that intersection. It's just not true. It never happened. And if it did happen and we weren't addressing it, it'd be a problem. We've got to address the street race and we've got to address this. Um, I think, I don't know how other way to say that they are boycotting us. Uh, the fact that they knew this on the agenda prior, they know it's on the agenda tonight. I, I don't even know why they could at least say, hey, we're tied down by the budget. We're tied down by other constraints, their priorities that the mayor's office has. But the fact they don't show up at all or say a thing, I mean, even Colin wasn't here tonight, which is telling. And I, you know, like him and Matthew Hernandez a lot, they've, uh, they're responsive in some respects, but the fact that they're totally not showing up for this is, uh, I think, telling. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Becky? Becky, unmute yourself. I got you. Um, I, you go. I agree that we we should send a letter, but I don't agree with the negative tone of the letter because I think it alienates the uh, council office. And for that reason, I would vote no. But I think it's, I can hear it right now sitting at the meeting, but I don't think that the way to handle this problem is to attack the council office. It is not just his issue, it's the city issue. And uh, everybody needs to be involved. And I'm not understanding why it's being directed just toward one person. It's the police department who does traffic. And I know that uh, our council members oversee it, but I think this is a way too negative of a tone. And if you want to win, win something, you don't do it with vinegar. And I think all of the negativity should be reworked and should be taken out. But I am definitely in favor of sending a late letter against street racing. And just to elaborate here, thank you, Becky. The copies of this letter is going to the mayor, Eric Garcetti, to Councilwoman Nuri Martinez, to the city attorney, Mike Fuhrer, and to Chief uh, Moore, so that they are aware of all this situation and the PRNC challenge uh, within Porter Ranch. Thank you. We so should much. also add yes, Burns on the that thing as well. Of it is, the thing of it is, is that you're not trashing them. You're trashing John Lee. And you're sending everyone in the city a letter trashing John Lee. And I just think that that's really a low blow. And that's not what we're about. We're supposed to be an advisor to him. We're not supposed to be trashing him. And there's a reason probably why he doesn't want to be around us. Because all we do is trash him and his people who attend the meetings, along with all the other elected representatives. And if oh, you guys oh. haven't figured that out, why nobody shows up at our meetings from offices, you know, you, you might want to look into it. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Becky. Lori? I was going to say I disagree on, on what Becky's. I understand the tone, and it's usually better to catch, you know, you can catch more with honey than with vinegar. I understand that concept. But I believe we've given him ample time and ample choice, chances to come to our meetings. And, and Colin has refused to address it when he's been at the meetings in the past. Um, just push, they keep pushing us off. And I, th I think we're just frankly kind of tired of it. And if we don't get have, have some kind of strong language, you know, nothing's gonna happen and nothing's gonna get done. That's the only reason why I'm going forward. I would say I would vote yes on the letter as written. Thank you, Lori. Miran? Uh, well, uh, the letter has a very specific platform and a very specific agenda. Whether I understand the language or I don't understand the language, but it's a letter requesting from our city council to start to work with us and to start finding a resolution to the problems that we are facing in our community and in our society. I agree with all of you that this is not only a city council issue, this is also a LAPD issue, this is also city issue, but uh, Porter Ranch deserve a better resolution. They deserve a better attention. We need to put an end for the racing. How dangerous is it? I don't know what to say. You can get be killed. Uh, safety is number key, number one. If you don't have safety, it could create too many other problems. It could create too many sensitive other issues. It could be issues on community wise. Uh, this letter, whether you like the language or you don't like the language, we, as 
we need to come up all together and we need to work together. And we need even maybe find even to put a special meeting with the city council member and also address this even. We have problems that has not been resolved. We have problems that has not been touched. We have homeless problem. We have safety problems. We have schools problem. Where are they? Where are the solutions? It is time for us to get together and work together for one cause to save our community. Thank you. Thank you, Miran. Hassan? Thank you, David. Um, I want to say that I fully support the letter. I said at the beginning, I agree with what uh, Lori mentioned. And uh, respectfully to Becky, I disagree with her um, because if you walk around and talk to our stakeholders and we at Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council here, we represent the people. I personally have no political agenda or allegiance to anyone. I couldn't care who is our councilman as long as he takes care of our issues. I walk at Cessna. I have several friends living on that street. They have called me, they have seen me walking and they tell me, what are you guys doing about all these unsafe, loud race cars here? And every time I tell them, we are working through our safety committee. We are in touch with the councilman's office and this and that. I am frankly running out of excuses to give them. And here we are elected officials of our community that we are supposed to go. Who do we go to? We go to our officially elected representatives such as John Lee and you know mayor and whomever, right? At this moment, I mean, I do agree that the tone of the letter is not probably the way I would have written my first letter. However, the fact that they have had ample opportunities to be here, to answer, to get in touch, to answer emails, to participate, it really leaves us no choice. So I don't wanna, you know, put uh, honey and mustard and then try to make it beer. It is what it is. We talked about it last time. A lot of those um, inputs have been taken into consideration. It's been incorporated into this letter. And I think we should just really um, cut our, uh, I would say, good time spending more time discussing this. And just go ahead and vote on it, David. I appreciate the time you're giving us, but I think a lot of these points have been already discussed and this is just repeat of what we already covered last time. Thank you. Jason Hector. Um, there's just a correction on the letter on number three. If you go up a little tiny bit. Got it. Um, see how that how is crossed out. Just fix that, right? Yes, we missed that. Thank you, Jason. That's all. Um, and then- You left that there just to see if you would see it. I'm watching. <laughs> and then um, can we send the letter to Catherine Burns? Of course, I just, I, that, I already said that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to argue over this. I mean, I really, I really believe that we should send the nice letter first, but obviously the board doesn't feel that way. So I support this letter either way, but I just feel like we would have a better chance of success sending the nice letter first. But uh, I, I agree that there have been many opportunities and that was essentially the nice letter. So um, I support this. So that's about it. Send it to Catherine Burns. I'll make the amendment and the motion to approve adding Catherine Burns and with that change on number three, uh, eliminating how. Okay. Let's, uh, I've got one more, David Lasher. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, need to, I, I don't think we can, uh, we can let one of those comments just slide. I, I'm stunned that anyone thinks that our board is perceived as trashing. Uh, in quote, our officials, other representatives. We've been very complimentary toward all of them from the school board up. We have not attacked Lee staff. Um, conversely, we've been very complimentary toward Colin especially. I started working in little G government, little G government 20 years ago next month. I've been in his shoes. 
I've been to hundreds of council meetings. I know what his job's like. I know how much pressure he's under. I know how much workload he has. Um, we have never been unkind to him. We've been respectful of him. Mm -hmm. I think we know why council member Lee specifically may or may not take issue with our board specifically and others in the area that haven't have taken uh, issue with the specific concern. But the fact is that uh, I don't know how many times you're going to rewrite this letter. I, I think let's be done rewriting it and get it in. He could have responded. He's not going to respond. He hasn't chosen to respond. Colin wasn't here tonight for whatever reason. But again, I like Colin. I like Matthew. His staff is great. They're working hard. And I don't think we've ever been disrespectful uh, of anybody from Scott Schumerson to Brad Sherman. We've always been kind and complimentary, all the reps and appreciated them. We've been ingratiatingly supportive. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you for answering questions. So I, I'm surprised that anybody thinks that we're quote trashing all these reps. It's stunning to me that that was said, but uh, let's, let's get this done and get it in. Thank you. I have three questions from attendees. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, uh, uh, Michelle Hill. There we go. This is John and Michelle. Can you hear me now? Oh, loud and clear. Go ahead. Uh, listen, my wife and I have visited at least 15 different neighborhood uh, councils. And we live in Northridge. Uh, I was band parents president for Granada Hills High School. At least that's what it was called then. What we have observed, and it's a fact, uh, John Lee's office, office in total, is not ignoring you. I can tell you nine out of 10 of the council meetings that we've been to in the past three weeks all say exactly the same thing you do. He doesn't respond. His people don't respond. Um, it's just there's something else they're focusing on, but they choose to ignore everybody, not just you folks. And believe me, you guys are a standard that everybody should run their neighborhood councils by. But keep in mind, please, your intent in that letter is clear, but he is not picking on Porter Ranch. I guarantee you that. Uh, I have a development 10 feet from, I have a three-story building that's going up because John Lee chose to ignore it. It's 10 feet from the back of my property. And I just found out after five years of fighting this, that the same developer in district three made changes to his footprint, which is the same footprint of mine. And they put homes instead of three story townhomes, much different approach. But I want you to understand you guys are doing it right. Letters good. It is not. It is not something he purposely picks on Porter Ranch. I've been, you know, in the past four weeks, the different, he just choose, he and his staff choose to ignore it. You talk about homeless, oh, anybody that's been to the District 12 office, right across the street, there's 15 motor homes now, and there is two, two blocks long of homeless that are there. So my point to you folks is send it. It's not him personally. You need to be the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. I have driven, and I am Thank you for your support. Appreciate it. Ron the guy. Hello. Yeah, the only the only thing I have is just a few comments to make. First of all, uh, uh, he's not going to do anything for you. I, I hope all of you really know that now. Uh, the letter should end that if we don't hear from him, we'll just assume that. He's coming out flat out saying he's not going to help us because the office, his predecessor and his office, they don't have management reports that track things that need to get done in the office and how long they're sitting out there. So he has no idea that his staff is being very ineffective and he'll never know that. I, I, I just believe that. I think he's, as far as a nice guy, he's a hell of a nice guy. I, I like John, but he, he just doesn't have the management tools and the skills to run that office. Uh, now, what I would be requesting is uh, if he's going to do something and if LAPD is going to do something, they're going to get a squad car out there with a license plate reader. That's if they really want to do something. They're going to get uh, a uh, radar uh, uh, speedometer put out there with a, with a camera on it to start tracking these people. 
That's if they want to do something about it. Now, when I was on the neighborhood council, we got tired of asking LAPD for help. So I contacted the sheriff's department. And at that time, the sheriff's department was handling security for MTA. And because we had a bus system running up uh, on uh, Rinaldi there, that gave them enough uh, informa uh, information and jurisdiction to uh, uh, go after the speeders. And they actually apprehended uh, some people up there and then LAPD caught wind of it. And they wanted the sheriff's department out of the LA city territory. And our neighborhood council spoke up and said, well, you know what? We, we love the LAPD and we want the LAPD to do it, but you didn't do anything. So we got the sheriff's department to do it. So they ended up doing kind of a joint task force and everything. And then when I left, it, I don't know what happened, if it continued on or, or whatever. It looks like right now the sheriff's department is not involved at all. But we just, uh, to be frank with you, I just got tired of asking and asking and asking. We finally got some results and we got these cars impounded. And at that time, um, um, maybe I'm wrong because I'm seeing the penalties that you mentioned. They were uh, destroying these cars. Uh, there was some kind of a law on there. Uh, it was, it was uh, uh, Greg Smith got something going on with racketeering or something, and and they were destroying these cars. So I don't know what the penalties are anymore, but it got really serious. But it started with us asking the sheriff's department for help, and we got it. So those are my only thoughts. So those are some specific things that the LAPD could be doing without putting any manpower up here. I physically sitting in a squad car, but two different uh, techniques of finding out who's doing this and when. And also because by the time you they, they start racing, they have uh, uh, watchers all over the place and they see LAPD coming if they even come at all. And they, ra they call ahead and say, hey, they're coming and everybody just disperses. So what I'm talking about are things that are going to permanently be there with cameras and everything so that it doesn't matter if they leave. We've got their license plates. We've got, you know, uh, some visuals on these people. But perhaps we need to reach out to the sheriff's department again. Uh, uh, right beyond uh, Mason uh, uh, is um, uh, LA sheriff's. County Territory. That's correct. Okay, so Ron, anyway, anyway, got to move those, on those, on this. Those are my thoughts. So I support the letter, and I think our do nothing. Uh, I call him uh, a, a goofball, Garcetti. He needs to get involved. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Always valued. Thank you, Ryan Allen. I'm here. Good Talk evening, good evening, good evening, members. Uh, I will save the budget advocate for the next one, but I just wanted to weigh in on this real quick. I being a resident of Granada Hills and being on GHNNC, I can tell you that, uh, well, first of all, this letter, I, I, I would send this letter out if it was mine. So I don't have any problem with this letter. Uh, I believe in being straightforward and honest, but uh, I can tell you John Lee's office and staff are not ignoring you guys. They, uh, the last, last comments were correct. He is failing to meet a number of NCs because I go to most of them. And I ha we haven't seen him or his staff at Granada Hills North for, I don't know, three, four months. So it's not a matter of him not caring about what you are doing. It's a matter that for whatever reason, he's uh, making different choices. I I I'm a supporter of John, all right? I think everybody that knows me knows that. But I'm also critical of John. Uh, I've been very critical of him and I've been critical of him publicly. But uh, we're in a very harsh time right now. And I can tell you that you're not gonna get any support from the police and you're not gonna get any support from, from the sheriffs and you're not gonna get any support from the CHP. And the reason is they're all being attacked for their, their funding and it's very difficult on them. We're in a very difficult period of time where there is an enormous amount of backlash on them and they are literally afraid. I have a personal friend who I had a conversation with and told her, you guys gotta be careful. She's, I said, it's getting difficult and dangerous out there. She says, yeah, two weeks later, she's home for the next three weeks because a homeless man 
punched her in the nose and broke her nose. So it, it's not easy for them out there. And the laws have been modified and changed so that they do not have the power to impound. They do not have the power to look at videos that are taken and they're not there. They have to see it themselves. And, and it's a very difficult situation. So uh, it's frustrating and you're gonna continue to be frustrated just as we are because we have the same goddamn stuff, excuse my language, uh, happening at uh, Rinaldi and Balboa where they, they do donuts all exactly. evening. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's it's not a good situation right now because because there is a lot of dissension in the public and the public doesn't care. If the public doesn't care, you aren't going to get any support. So just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. All right. On that note, since we don't have anybody, uh, there's no more comments or questions. Um, let's move ahead and we'll call the well, let's get the motion. Do we have a motion on the table? Saad? Yes. Uh, I move to send the revised letter to council member John Lee regarding the pending ongoing safety issues in Porter Ranch as amended by Jason Hector by removing the word how, which is uh, scratched in item number three on page two and to add in the carbon copy in the CC, uh, LAPD Captain Catherine Burns. Second that. I'll second that. Oh, it's seconded. Jason second. Jason, don't second. One moment, everybody. Okay. At this time, I'd like to call the vote. Randy, absent. Hassan? Yes. Mark Haynes. Jason Hector? Yes. Miran? Yes. Becky? He's absent. David Lasher? Yes. Lori Choi? Yes. Assad? Yes. David Balin? Yes. Gabriel? He's absent. Okay. Then um, motion is approved. We will send the letter out. Thank you. Much needed. Okay. Let's move on to, um, let's get on to. We're out of here. Ten. Oh, it's coming back. Brian Allen for Budget Advocate. Are you here? Did we lose our hey, Budget Don, Advocate? Thank you. thank you for unmuting. Uh, more of the morbid. Uh, I have to be honest with you. I don't know if you received, you should have received a, uh, a article or a two page uh, email from the budget advocates with the current uh, challenges and deficit, et cetera. It's, it's not pleasant reading. Uh, I've said this too many times and I'm afraid I'm gonna say it for months to come. The budget is a disaster. We, we now have a $675 million deficit. We have uh, a difficulty in getting the raises addressed at the unions. We are looking at many, many, many departments that are uh, not being funded to the level that they need to in order to be functional. You heard earlier from Gibson that they're working on a very small staff, which is true. Uh, the same thing is true with, with the city clerk. Anybody that leaves, and Assad knows this, anybody that leaves is not being replaced. Uh, there And the current belief uh, is that there's going to be a, a billion dollar loss in 2122. 20, uh, so this is going to go on as long as the, uh, the amount of, uh, of uh, infections of this virus continue to be high, this, this lockdown is going to continue simply because we do not have the hospital beds 
in order to treat people. It's, it is turning out that the, that, that the county is not able to do any fare any better than the city. Uh, the, both the sheriff and the police, LA police are very much uh, short handed and they're losing people right and left for uh, not only because of the uh, lockdown, but because of the political environment. So th there's, there's a lot of problems and we're looking at a thousand people being removed from the police department, more than a thousand people being removed from the police department and every department is in the same point. In my opinion, our elected officials are impotent to do anything because they don't have the resources to do it. They don't have any place to pull from and they really don't have an understanding of what is going to come next. So I would say, sit down, buckle up. It's gonna still be a very bumpy ride for a while. So anybody have any questions? I'll be happy to try to address them. Sounds like I put everybody- questions. Other than that, how was it play, Mrs. Lincoln? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from, we have two questions from participants. Rhonda Guy. Uh, when uh, we were having some budgetary issues, I went to the community to ask for some donations. And then I was stopped by a couple of members of our own board, surprisingly, but at least one uh, donation came through from Union Bank that I took to, had Greg Smith take to city council and he got that approved for us to accept that. And we could have got, uh, I should say, I could have got a number of other corporations to donate in addition to uh, uh, some companies like Wells Fargo was interested in doing uh, artwork up here in Porter Ranch. Uh, but that of course, uh, we had a couple of few board members here that didn't think that was the appropriate thing to do and it got stopped. But uh, that is an avenue and perhaps it's time for the neighbor councils to ask city council for some leeway on that. If they could pass some uh, legislation to allow us to use some corporate donations from donors that are approved by the city council, because of course they don't want money from anybody. It could be a you know horrible group that is donating the money. Uh, so, but uh, that is an avenue if uh, the neighbor councils want to get together and choose. Because I, I was trying to get that off the ground and. Um, uh, if I would have been left alone on that, we would have we brought some good money into the neighbor council anyway. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Just as a quick as a quick response to that, the neighborhood councils obviously can take whatever advice they deem uh, is uh, valuable to this to the city council and provide such uh, questions and such suggestions. However, the neighborhood councils on their own cannot do anything about that, and unfortunately. The corporations have been donating to the city councils. They have been donating to the homeless uh, problems. They have been donating food. There has been quite a bit of charity that has been has come in. However, the amount of money that the corporations can provide is minuscule in comparison to the shortage that is happening. Six hundred and seventy-five million dollars is a lot of money. So uh, it's it's. I suggest that if you have a desire to do that, please do, but I wouldn't look for any miracles at this point. Hold on one second. We have um, Ron, the guy, Ron, I think he's Ron. Ron, you didn't have any other, any other comments. You know, right? I, just want, I just wanted to respond to that. The gentleman, uh, I'm not suggesting that you're gonna, uh, that somebody in Port Ranch is gonna raise $670 million for the entire city. If that's what you got out of that, you're totally mistaken with what I was trying to say here. There are things that we can get done in our immediate community, and there is funding out there if we choose to go after it. And that's a fact. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Um, who else had their hand up? Jason? No, I'm good. Mehran. Mehran. Go ahead, Mehran. I have Good evening, Brian. I have one question. Could you just maybe elaborate on the one billion loss? Is this in service or is it in salary or what, what exactly it consists of? Well, it consists any, anywhere. Well, first of all, the majority of, the, of any budget, corporation or government, is labor. 
And that's true with the city of Los Angeles. 70% of the monies they spend is on labor. So uh, much of the loss is in labor, yes, but much of the loss is in every other thing that they could buy or should buy or wanna buy. I happen to be uh, an advocate of Dunn stopping these elections and the city clerk stopping the elections. We're gonna spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to have elections that have no meaning whatsoever in terms of accomplishing anything important. Uh, and why, when we have such drastic uh, financial woes, it doesn't make sense. So the, the city is not only not receiving funds, mostly from sales tax, uh, but, but they're not receiving funds and still spending money when they could be diverting that money to something else. Uh, there's a great deal of consternation about the the police budget being cut. And the mayor has, in my opinion, rightfully stepped in because he's concerned about public safety. But they wanna take funds away from the police and give it to this and that and various other operations. But for what reason? It, if it isn't working right now, they're not gonna be able to develop, in my opinion, develop a plan that's gonna work in the short run. So wait until you have the ability to develop something. But that's just my opinion. But if your question is where is the fund, where is it, where are the, where are the deficits? Everywhere, in every department. And if you talk to any department, they'll tell you the same thing. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's it You're for welcome. our questions. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're gonna hold it against you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, what well, item number eleven? Uh, this is Jason. You want to take take this away, Jason? Sure. Um, we got a response to the letter that we approved um, requesting quarterly street sweeping. So I asked David to attach the response from the city and allow everybody to review it. Can everybody see it? Um, I'll just kind of go through it quickly. My question is, can people see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So it came um, from, okay, basically we were requesting the street sweeping on those intersections that you see there. And um, their response was that they're losing a dozen motor sweepers um, for various reasons. And then the next paragraph is mentioning using discretionary funds from the council office. And they cite an example in Sherman Oaks. Um, but they do, they say, um, it's Mark Simon, the Valley superintendent, um, who is the contact in the last paragraph. It says, I think it would be great for you to meet with Mark Simon via Zoom um, so that you can share more information on how um, so, you know, they're opening the door to work with us, but um, right now, basically, I put these on 311, and uh, the city comes maybe two or three weeks later. I don't know how it's going to be impacted with the budget cuts in terms of that, but um, I think the letter was beneficial. At least they knew, know who we are. They know the problems we're facing. They know we don't have any service right now. But I wanted to hear from the board in terms of next steps. Um, I want to see what you guys uh, feel about this response and suggest um, so that the committee can, you know, decide if we're just going to, you know, forget it or we want to allocate funds or we want to meet with uh, Mark Simon and work on other ideas. Um, so that's all. Todd, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Well, my answer, the simple answer to what you said, all the above, we should do everything. I just wanted to clarify, CD4 and, you know, through working with them as uh, under my job, they always have managed to come out with funds through the multiple uh, art funds, especially Sherman Ox kept me busy, I would like to say at least 70% of my time, the other 30% went to the other 14 councils. 
and I assume the new uh, lady in charge there, the new councilwoman, Nithya, she will continue on that. And what it is, they have a lot of the, I don't want to say the art money, there was a lot of money from the construction that happened along Ventura Boulevard and all that. And a lot of those funds are very specific towards lighting, towards traffic lights, towards bus stops, towards trees. And it's back to the same issue that you and David and I discussed a couple of times. We need an art fund. We need sort of a fund. Got it. Just there you go. The mail. Uh, so uh, we need something. Guess, uh, I, the, what is the? I mean, do you? What is? I want to hear from from you and everyone else. What do you recommend? Um, well, the first yeah, thing is yeah, tomorrow yeah. we are meeting with Adil in the VANC. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, we're going to be introduced on one-to-one. -one. He will work great with us. His team, I think you as the beautification committee work very close with his team. They will show you how, ca how can we access any feasible possible discretionary fund. If there is nothing there, then we have to go the way around it to establish a bid, the business, uh, you know, business district, so that we get some of the art fund, well, something... I and I, then let's learn we, from these guys. I agree with you. Let's talk to all of them and learn. If you learn one bit from each one of them, you could put it in a nice package and run with it. I, I know you can do it. I, let me, ask, I, let Jason, me make it simple. Let me just ask a simple question to the board. Is this something that we feel like the board wants to allocate money towards or not? Just make it simple because we can do all these different things. We can go to CD12. We could do a business improvement district. But that's not the point. The point is, is the board want to push this forward and fund this or kind of forget about it? And, you know, if you identify a specific fund, that's fine. But um, the question becomes, what's the next step? Do we want to allocate money towards this or not? That's kind of so, where we ought to... Jason couple things. One, um, we don't have a, an amount to consider, but I think we're, I think we're, we're, we're throwing a blind eye. I think most people that are aware of the Sunshine Canyon Fund, and there's more than enough money that the council member utilizes else, elsewhere. Um, and he really needs to start sending money to where he, he resides. Um, I mean, he gave one council $100,000. He gives LAPD tons of money for overtime. And, and it's well-deserved, don't get me wrong. But that Sunshine Canyon money falls within our boundaries. That five-mile radius falls within our boundaries. He, they, that office has allocated money everywhere besides Porter Ranch. Well, I shouldn't say that because I know that they gave Castle Bay money. They gave Porter Ranch Community School money but they've never gave the stakeholders, the community, the people that pay taxes, the people that are paying for their salaries, they need to start spending that money for what the community needs. Uh, quarterly sweep, sweep, sweeping, you know? We need to have a meeting with them to let them dig deep. I mean, if they can allocate $100,000 for the council next door to us, I think it's time. All right. I mean, you know how much is in um, there, Jace. We look guess, at it. We keep an eye on it. I guess. Um, do we have an idea how much it would cost if we were to do a quarterly, even if we did a uh, sweep, uh, sweeping and scraping of the. It kind of makes street? me, I guess, I guess that's a separate question. And that would mean that we would have a meeting. Um, but going back to uh, the idea of discretionary funds, <coughs> it seems like it makes me think of the letter that we just approved. So basically the letter uh, to address the issue with the street uh, racing could be funds to you know, give to the traffic division to cover the five mile radius. So if you um, allocate funds to the five mile radius. So I guess my point is, is um, we've already approved this letter with the, um, 
the street racing and, and see if they'll allocate funds towards that in a uh, five mile radius. You know, I, I mentioned that before at the, you know, when it came up uh, previous. So I, I just feel like um, if that's the direction we're going, then this should wait. And, um, you know, I mean, I'll put stuff on 311, but, you know, if the councilman isn't going to give money to um, give to LAPD, uh, whatever division it is handling that, um, the, the street racing or whatever, or to I'm fund sure. the recommendations are, you know, whether it be some of the things that came up to be mentioned, you know, the, um, I think Ron had some good points. So I, I think we just need to, it, it, you know, I'll forget this, you know, street racing, address that. And I'll just put stuff in 311, but we have to see if there's going to be any discretionary funds that they will support us with in Porter Ranch. You know, that's the question right now. I mean, I, right. I mean, We're <laughs> We got a little bit for the art, but um, you know, is it is there going to be come from that? That, that came from that, that came from a totally different source. Well, yeah, that was from the the art fees, but uh, art funds. But um, yeah, as far as Sunshine Canyon, you know, in the three mile radius, I'm not five mile five mile radius. I'm not necessarily sure that the precedent set by the previous councilman. Um, Mitch Englander is um, going to be the uh, precedent set moving forward. That's kind of a legal question, I guess. <laughs> or, or you got to measure. You got to get out. We don't, of yeah, we don't want to go there. He has legal questions. <laughs> we don't, all right. Let me let me take um, some questions from yeah, our attendees. Uh, Brian Allen. Okay. The. Uh... You're right about the Sunshine Canyon funds. There's quite a bit of money there. And I don't know if anybody knows, but $10 million was, was provided to the uh, Pettit Park for the rebuilding of the pool down there. Uh, so there is stuff there, but, and you also brought up the $100,000. Uh, I would recommend, and I think Jason, I think you were at our meeting, I don't remember, but I would highly recommend that uh, you work with us on that $100,000. We're not going to find a, a way to spend that $100,000 that we have available to us for the community. I appreciate so, that, Brian. Thank you. So I think we should work together on that. Racing, it's a shared problem, you know? It's, yeah, it's and the other thing is, I would write, if you were writing a letter on this, uh, because of what they're saying here, I would, I would bring up the fact that they are wasting taxpayer money. Uh, weren't you at our meeting when we discussed the issue of sanitation? Yep. Uh, yes. The the problem is that they are they are providing free services to their own employees <laughs> in, in large amounts. Sanitation and, department. Yes. And that's that's got to stop. So we as councils need to address those kind of uh, of ridiculous uh, expenditures and hold people accountable. Uh, just because you work for sanitation doesn't mean you can have multiple uh, trucks come in, drive into your driveway, and the workers come and help uh, with your remodeling of a house. That, that does not work well. It doesn't set well with me at all or our council. So there, there are, there's waste and fraud going on that we all need to think about and try and uh, address at some time down the future. Very good can hear, Thank can, you. Brian, can we hear more about that? I haven't heard about that issue you missed the oh, i'll be happy to tell you i i kind of keep the specifics quiet because the people who it happened in front of or but next to are not willing to say anything they have sent we are sending a letter off to the councilman but a a member of sanitation bought a house in granada hills and he's going to rent it but before he does that he's remodeling it so in the remodel phase of of uh, demolition he was pulling everything out of the house that he didn't want. And he had city trucks and city uh, employees come by, park in his driveway, go into the house, pick up the trash and put it in the trucks and haul it away. And this happened multiple times. So, I mean, it's just, it's, a, it's appalling to me that this would happen in a government department. We all know that there are perks in working in corporations and things like that do happen, 
but the corporation has the right to choose whether it does or it doesn't. But in this situation, these are taxpayer funds right. and they are not to be used at their discretion for whatever purpose they want. And that is what happened. And I, I apologize. We, this isn't a free form discussion, obviously, hold but on, hold on, hold on. has brought David Goldstein be contacted? Cause that's right up his alley. This that's, all, that's already been done. Let's, let's move on from this <laughs> stick conversation. Yes, yeah, stick Thank to you. the agenda. Ron, the guy? Yeah, well, so, some parts of the city have weekly street sweeping. Uh, we unfortunately have street sweeping whenever vehicles are available, resources are available. But the letter says that uh, they're not, it's not possible to be adding any new services. We're not asking for a new service. We're asking, asking for an existing service. And I think maybe it's time we find out from the city who's getting the weekly street sweeping. And maybe what we need to do now is we need to divvy that up equally throughout the entire yeah. city. So those weekly street sweepers, uh, sweeping areas don't get it weekly anymore. And I'm not, that's not saying to hurt somebody else, but, the, right. but that should be allocated evenly amongst all of the citizenry. Right. Yeah, so that was I, the original so, point so, of the letter. Ron, you can go on their um, website and see all the routes. And that was the original exactly. letter, which said that we are we have zero routes in Porter Ranch. So the point of the letter is exactly what you're saying. Why do we have zero when, um, and I, I appreciate your point that, you know, maybe they don't need to be swept weekly. And, you know, all we need really is a quarterly. You know, that's all we are asking for. But it, it does involve two trucks, but, you know, um, it is on their website. You can go and see all the routes, and there are no routes. Well, uh, when I was the uh, uh, president of the Neighborhood Council, I used to meet with Bill Robertson. He was a general manager of the Bureau of Street Services. Mm -hmm. And what we worked out was uh, I would meet with, uh, with Rec and Parks. And they would tell me when they're going to be cleaning up all the parks in Porter Ranch and blowing off the sidewalks. And then I would then coordinate a date shortly thereafter for street services to come and do all the gutters. That's why, I don't know if you remember way back when, the sidewalks and everything looked a lot better than they do today because right. Reckon Parks was essentially just blowing all their sidewalks off and street services was picking everything up. We also had some neighborhood cleanups and one of the things that, Santa, uh, that, that the street services had is they brought in, uh, we, we pile everything up in the gutters and they had this truck that sucked up. It was a big, like a vacuum sucked up all of the debris because they didn't want to bring, uh, the complaint of the staff was right. they didn't want to bring the roller type uh, street sweepers yeah. in here because all the pine needles get, yes. get stuck in the brushes. They're so the same thing. Yeah. yeah, that took even more time when they got back to the shop. There's, to like clean a all scooper, that stuff. there's a scooper and then a sweeper. Yeah, basically. but they also had a vacuum. You've probably okay, seen so them, something like the ones that sanitation uses, suck water out of uh, uh, something. But anyway, and anyway, this is, this, is not, this is not a new service. It's an existing service that they just haven't been getting to. And then I would try to concentrate most heavily on those dates around the holidays so that we were like ship shape around all of December for the uh, for Christmas and the Jewish holidays and Ramadan and the other other, other religious holidays, uh, make sure that everything was all cleaned up so that when our residents up here in Porter Ranch had their guests, their friends, or relatives coming up here, it looked really nice. Uh, and this wasn't something they were we were asking them to do every week or every month, but we yeah. did get we did get more service than we got before. But part of it was just coordinating between rec and parks and street services. Yeah. Thank you for your comments, Ron. Okay. David, unmute yourself, please. Michelle? Yeah. Michelle and John? Yes. Go um, ahead. Okay, um, one of the things about this operation, if you will, is uh, we have noticed coming down uh, Reseda that the, the areas of concern, if you will, where there's businesses, they just kind of pick it up, what have you. In this particular case, um, being creative is probably 
90% of the problem. It was already suggested by somebody that you work with them and say, hey, as an example, we have them coming every week. And about an hour beforehand, they come out, write all the tickets, then they come through. It may be a situation where they have the weekly pickups is that it is actually a revenue generator for them because people that have cars can afford to pay the $70 ticket. But it's something to keep in mind, being creative with the city and showing them their shortfalls where maybe they've got, you know, every week somewhere where they have no trees, no real trash that they can move off, maybe doing it once every two weeks. So the creativity side is gonna be a big benefit for you folks. Um, it's not exactly like they're doing, you know, they're, they're waxing the curbs, but then again, in an area where you really need it, that's something you need to pull it pull it out. So our input is yeah. be creative and show them just like it was already suggested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. David? I think we're missing one, dial us into one thing. At least up where I am, I think they need to tie this to either before or after wind events, but especially before and after rain. We have the storm drains are heavily, heavily covered with all manner of debris to the point the water will run a half mile downhill past a large drain that's completely occluded. Yep. They need to clean them when they, we, it's LA, we know it's gonna rain. They need to clean the drains before it rains and then come back a couple of days after rain because everything else is flushed down there and filled it. And uh, it's, it's great to have the streets clean for you know holidays and things that people come into town, but it, I don't know if it's in the flats, but definitely on those downhill roads, you know, Tampa, Reseda. The, the coordination point. Got to get tied into that, to the before and after storm, or rain. That's because yeah. that's when it's really bad. Well, the wind, it's like every and the what, wind. Every three days we have the wind in the, in the wintertime. You know, wait till it's rain. You'll see the water come from all the way down I from Brasilia, all the way down to Reseda at the bottom. And it actually has flooded my yard because it hits a corner and goes up in my lawn. Yep. I live at the bottom of a hill, so I, I can relate. We fish there. <laughs> Miran, please. Yeah, I actually, um, I am going to second what David Barron mentioned. We need to have some uh, sunshine, sunshine funds to spend in Portorange. It's time. If you remember, Greg Smith did parks and services in Portorange. But afterwards, we were neglected and everything got disappeared. Every taxpayer needs to get the services. We need to come up with a solution and a platform, how to establish the fund and how to work through the right executives to Sunshine Funds in our community. The Sunshine Funds has a specifications from district to a district, from a region to a region. And then I think that the president and everyone, we can uh, draft a letter and request to have, how we can get the money for this project. We, we, Let be a vacation once again, smile and shine. <laughs> Thank you, Miran. Jason, you wanna conclude this? Yeah, I, I, I think your your point is right on, Miran. Um, you know, um, our neighbors in um, Granada Hills North are working on this. And I think we have the same issues here. And so, um, you know, we we'll try and put our best foot forward um, in achieving that. It sounds to me like we, we do need to coordinate with the department. I think, um, I think we'll, we'll set up a meeting with uh, Mark, Mark Simon and um, share the comments and, um, hopefully come up with some ideas and recommendations um, in terms of, you know, being creative. I wrote that down, makes sense. Um, it, it is true that some areas don't need um, weekly service perhaps. And so I believe that um, 311 is really the key. And um, that through that, we, we just, it's about relationships, honestly. You know, back when Alex Kim was the chair of beautification, we met with them and we were getting um, good service. So, you know, everybody had a lot of really good things to say. So I thank you and I'm glad that, um, that we put this on and um, 
you know, we'll keep writing letters and we'll keep um, moving. So I, I, I feel like we have a um, good feedback and um, I don't think we need a motion. It sounds like we're not at a point where we wanna um, allocate our funds to this. Um, just what I'm reading from the comments. Well, I, what I would recommend is that we look at 311, we look at um, you know, trying to see if we could get some of that art money allocated, not to the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council, but to the Porter Ranch community, to the stakeholders, the homeowners. Um, maybe we need to formalize a letter to the councilman's office requesting the funds for what should be already being done anyway. So we'll talk about that. Um, on that note, should we move on? Yep. Okay. Item 12. Now this is extremely important because <laughs> we need this. Um, this is a discussion and possible action to approve $232.30 for the joint usage and ownership of the bulletin board box located at 11280 Corbin Avenue, Northridge. It's most likely still Porter Ranch, uh, California 91326. Um, so this- I second. So okay. moved. So moved. Huh? I'll I'll make the motion and yeah, I would second that. Second. You can't second without a motion. <laughs> I'm I'm in a race with you guys. I'll move. I'm I'll trying to be funny it. to see All if right. you're awake or not, but obviously you're awake. Oh, it's okay. Go ahead, David. Uh, All right. So uh, <laughs> so there's a motion um, motion on the floor for the money. We need the box. We need to be able to uh, put our um, our, our meetings to be agendized. If not, the like we've had it one time where we weren't able to utilize the box and uh, we had to cancel the meeting. So until something better comes up, um, I highly recommend uh, spending the $232.30 to jointly own the box until it falls apart like the last one did. David, Second. what is this? I'm sorry, what is this? Okay, so Miran, when we when we post our agendas, yeah, they have to be physically posted. So this is the location that we've always physically posted the agenda. They removed our previous one where we were. Oh, okay. So didn't, okay. We didn't sense. remove it. What happened was it fell apart oh. after years of usage. And this <laughs> is what they put in. <laughs> exactly. Mother Nature so, removed it. The wind blew blew up. So Jason, you had your hand up, go ahead. Oh, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, go ahead, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forgot what, I lost my train. Okay. Lori, you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to know, oh, this is that. just, is this a one-time fee or is this something that we're gonna pay? Nope, this is oh, this yeah. is a one-time fee to be part owners of the box. Yeah, I remember and what I was gonna say. Make sure we get like two or three keys. Can like, we ask for like at least two keys because, um, you know, Lori's secretary, but you're going to want one too, you know, just in case. That's all my comment. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, because, um, you know, I don't know if the board realizes it or not. Um, we've been utilizing the box because they let us use the box, but we've been taping it to the box. So for, for public view, because it has to be accessible 24 hours a day. All right, on that note, um, let me go ahead and um, call the vote. For the, uh, we have a motion, we have a second, and I'm going to go ahead and call the vote. Then. Any comments or questions before we move on? I second. No, are, <laughs> no comments. Who, by the way, who did second that? Was that you? Yeah, Jason me, or me, me, me. So Come I on, let's second it. I right. second. Scott seconded. It's okay. okay. You, did you move it, David, or did I? I don't know. If you're not moving it, I'm moving it. Moving yeah. what? You both moved it. <laughs> Are you moving, Jason? All right. You both Brandy, moved Brandy's it. absent. Moving out of California. Uh, you're moving. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll come pick your greens. Is this on there? Hassan? I'm here. Yes, yes. I okay. Did. Yes. So what is your vote? Yes or no? Yes, yes. For sure. Thank you. Martin? David, yes. Jason, yes. Miran? Yes, yes, yes. Becky? Jackson? David 
Becky. Hey. Absolutely. No. Becky. Lasher. <laughs> yes. Lasher. David Lasher. Yes. David Lasher. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yes. Fruit. I'm going to send you the roll sheet, Lori. <laughs> Assad. Yes. Okay, got you. And then Gabriel. Gabriel. They both checked out around eight, about eight to eleven. Absent, and then Mark Haynes is absent. Okay. Yeah, got eight, it. Seven, right. and then four absent. Are you keeping track of this? Because I've been keeping track of it as well. Thank good. you, Jason. Yeah. Double trouble. Oh, very good. So we can we can compare. Thank you very much for doing uh -huh. that. All right. Okay. So motion passes. All right. Um, board member updates and committee reports. Okay, do you want me to start? Hassan? Assad or Hassan, which one? Hassan. Yes. Hassan. 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 Yeah. Sustainability, <laughs> go ahead. Hi, uh, not a whole lot of update. Uh, there was a few conference calls with uh, different uh, um, organization uh, and NSCA in specific Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance in specific. So I took part in a couple of those and uh, uh, the latest update, we will have a sustainability committee meeting this coming Friday at 10 a.m. It's been already posted on our agenda. So um, hopefully those who are interested will join us and uh, we have a pretty good uh, one hour discussion on a variety of topics. So I hope you can join us. Thank can you uh, share what the meeting is gonna be on the, uh, your Friday meeting? Uh, you mean the, the discussion? Uh, discussion is going to be specific to um, Envision program, which is a program that really highlights some of the um, main concepts of uh, LA Green. And I think our uh, goal is really to understand that a little bit better, bring it together, and also um, for one of our guests, uh, uh, participants, Christine, who has a lot of knowledge. She's from uh, Cal State Northridge and also works for City of LA uh, to be able to tell us a little bit more about her experience and then hopefully bring a good program together so we can start 2021 on a, a good strong note with some ambitious uh, uh, works and projects to, to undertake. So that's pretty much what we're gonna discuss. Thank you. Jason Hector. Um, you know, I, I, I'll just, um, briefly say, uh, with respect to the trees, um, the progress is, um, going very good. And so I'm definitely thankful to Adele Hodge Khalil at, um, Bureau Street Services, who we sent the letter to, um, they're doing a very good job and, um, I will try and attend the meeting tomorrow where he's gonna be speaking um, to express my um, thankful that he's doing a good job as a general manager of the department. So um, the update is that they've removed, um, let's see, the, the trees that they removed last time, there were four of them, they went back and ground out the stumps and then they removed four, uh, let's see, four, along by the lake on Tampa. They removed the one on Wilbur and they removed the one all the way at the top of Tampa, north of Cessna. So all those trees have been removed. There's some stumps remaining. Um, so I'm hopeful that they will come back and grind those out. Um, the one tree that you guys had mentioned, I know David, you mentioned the tree and I, I know that tree is just horrible right on uh, Mego when you get off the freeway. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about that one, but um, I don't believe any anything's been done with that. Um, but that was kind of a late comer to the list. Um, obviously a problem, but um, maybe Assad has uh, some suggestions on that. But that's my um, update on the committee. Um, you know, more on a, a global perspective, I'm just completely taken back by what's happened. I never believed that we would go through what... A, you know, happened with the capital. So I'm just very, um, 
inspired by the efforts of the people defending the Capitol. And I just um, can't say, you know, more about it inspired me to um, get involved in um, law enforcement. So, um, you know, this is something that I really grew to appreciate just seeing what those guys did to defend the Capitol. I mean, it's so important. And so I just feel like I wanted to mention that, um, you know, it's just a dark time, but it's also an inspiring time when you see people put their lives on the line just to defend this country. And um, those are my comments. I just want Thank to you. share those thoughts. Thank you, Jason. Lori, you had your hand up and you can go, you can uh, do committee report as well. For both. Okay, yeah, first I just wanted to um, ask Jason if he was aware that somebody had put a little bit of graffiti on the electrical box at the, was it 118? And um, I can't remember the name of it. It's the one with the circles. On Tampa? It's below Tampa. It's the one closer to the 118 exit. Um, but off of Tampa or off of Reseda? Or... Yeah, I'm sorry, off of Tampa. Tampa is the one, yeah, getting right on the freeway there. Yeah. Uh, well, on which side is it? It's facing you when you when you're driving by. It's it's just okay. a little bit uh, where I'll their signature is or something. Okay, thank you. I'll I'll check it out and report it. Yeah, because um, I know you said you could probably clean those up, right? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For two years, for two years, they um, will take care of them. The yeah. artists will. If if it's something they can't just remove and the artwork has to be touched up. They do that for two years. They'll touch up the artwork. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. part of what, what the contract says. Okay, great. It's not much right now. It's just, I just worry that it's because it's words and I think it needs to be addressed. Okay. Um, as far that. as outreach goes, I'm working right now with the out, um, election committee to make sure we get outreach for the election. Um, and you know, we'll start creating some new advertisements slash um, posts for Facebook. I will try to start, um, boosting those posts using money and the funds that we just approved tonight and see if we can't get more people to um, request, um, you know, to be on our, on our board. Let's, let's get more involvement. If you're out and about in the neighborhood, you know, just think about it. And, you know, if you have a minute to mention it to someone, you know, mention it. Cause I know more people are trying as, as Jason mentioned, getting inspired by things that are happening lately. Um, more and more people want to be involved. Um, I'm a little bit blown away about everything and I've been very drained and emotionally. Um, so I'm getting very tired. I can't think of anything else I wanna add at this point. Thank you, Lori. Miran, you had a question and you can do your uh, committee report, please. Perfect. So a school LUST is still closed. The governor wants to open it in February, but not ready. Uh, I attended a meeting uh, by the governor of uh, California about hybrid schools and as well for the special need students. There are talks going throughout the schools that they are going to create the necessary environment and under the Department of Health, allowing students that they are under a special need to come back and gradually, this is not done yet. There is a still a conversation going on and the governor has not yet weighed in. Uh, there is a discussion between board members and the LST board members are divided into this, uh, uh, into this uh, request. Uh, I attended LAWB um, uh, Natural Gas uh, yesterday, well, last week. Uh, and then uh, hopefully they are, uh, this was more education. They are going to establish an education, uh, um, an education sessions for the school to discuss more about green energy and to discuss about sustainability uh, from elementary school. That's all I have. Thank you very much, David Lasher. Uh, not much to add on the budget. I think we got a real uh, earful from uh, Brian, and I think it just doesn't. We, we know where that's going. It's very, uh, it's pretty scary. Um, I wanted to add a couple of public safety concerns. One, the if you haven't taken the new off the new, newly configured uh, off ramp from Reseda for at Amigo, the westbound 118, they have gotten the signs to match the ground markings. They were conflicting for a few days, but it's uh, it's pretty sketchy. I've I've had occasion to see people screaming at each other who went straight both from the middle 
and from the left lane, following the old configuration of 20 years and the new one, and both screaming at each other, claiming they were right, because no one wants to look at the signs. Um, I think also philosophically, we have a, a not necessarily take a position on it um, at this time, but I have been told repeatedly and again in the last few days from motor officers that it's not a budget thing. It's more of a philosophical. They may use the budget excuse, but more of a philosophical thing. They're trying to still get rid of all the motor traffic enforcement, and there's no one else doing that. No one else does routine speed traffic enforcement. No one wants to get a ticket. Everybody hates, you know, getting pulled over with the, you know, for speeding, but it's the only thing keeping people in check are those motors because not the regular patrol cars and they're going to get rid of them. They want to replace them with the department of transportation, parking enforcement officers. I, I don't even know how that's going to work. It, it won't work, but you're not going to have, you know, parking force people using LIDAR and writing tickets. But uh, if I hear more about that, I'll let you know, but it's uh, that's, that's really sketchy. So hopefully that won't come to pass. Um, and we'll go from there. But uh, aside from that, I've had a cough. If you didn't notice, I'm trying to, Thank God for the mute button, but I, I hear some, we have some other health concerns within our council itself and also obviously within the community. So I wish everybody uh, well from, you know, any aspect of, of, of that. Thank you. Thank you, David. Asad? Yes, well, mine will be short because we already talked a lot about the safety and I thank you all for your support on the letter. Uh, and we will be discussing next the COVID-19 so I will not talk much about that. I'll uh, you know, make the comments when we're discussing that, just to make you aware that in addition to the COVID-19 and we're discussing it, we should be watching out for the vaccination and timelines of vaccination and all that. Uh, also, uh, we progressed as the ad hoc committee for the uh, air monitoring. We had few presentations from DPH and the minute we get any information or data we will be sharing immediately with the board with the hope to give to Lori for posting everywhere so that the stakeholders get a hold of whatever data we get it. And this way they could analyze the massive information that's out there. And hopefully the engineers and the environmental uh, scientists can make some graphs to make us better understand. With that, uh, last week uh, I, we lost as a city one of my you know, longtime colleagues and actually the first council member I worked uh, close with, Tom Labange. And uh, I think the same day we lost the, uh, from the Dodgers, Lars, Laros, and- uh, Great Tommy Lasorda. Lasorda. And uh, just, I, you know, uh, I guess uh, word to remember them uh, is in order, so maybe Mr. President, you acknowledge that at the end. Beside that, uh, thank you all, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. On that note, we will, uh, whew, it's a it's heavy, uh, heavy updates, you know, it's a very sombering time. So we will move on to item number 14, which I feel is gonna be beneficial to this community. Um, so, I'd like the whole board to uh, unmute themselves for this discussion because this is a discussion and possible action to establish the Porter and Chamber Council COVID-19 ad hoc committee. I'd like to get everybody's input. Um, so just uh, raise your hand and jump in because this is going to be, um, this, is, this is very serious and you know we're losing people um, one every six minutes. Um, so the question is, um, do we, are we interested in having an ad hoc committee? Um, I mean, the, then we have to start thinking about what can we really do? Um, what benefits we can have? Um, you know, to, I've always believed even on uh, dealing with the homeless, to do nothing is the wrong answer, to do something right. is the right answer. Um, Jason? Um, I'll just read, I wrote some notes before, you know, yes. I don't like to read from a script, but I'll, I'll just read some of the notes I made. Um, I wrote potential roles. I think number one, um, much of our role is outreach. Um, I, I wrote using surveys to see what stakeholders would like us to spend our money on. You know, with our, um, we have that ability within our email blast to send a survey to stakeholders because I'd like to hear from stakeholders what they like to see, um, ways that we could allocate our budget to COVID, because I think it is, it is kind of a challenge. Um, 
the primary role is to provide <coughs> information. So like Assad, thank you for bringing up the vaccination point. You know, there, it's always changing. So if we could make it easier for people to just maybe send them the link to the website, because people are busy. So if, if in the email blast, we can just have the link right there where people can sign up. Like I signed up, it's like you get a newsletter from public health that um, will give you updates because it's always changing. But I think people need access to current and beneficial information, whether it be knowing, you know, if they can get a vaccine or not, what groups they're testing, but also the link so they can sign up. Um, I just went to, uh, well, I just signed up for LAUSD. So it's uh, good to know that if you have a student in LAUSD, the child, the whole family can get tested for free. So um, I can help you with those links, but um, just information like that is very helpful. Um, I got test. I'm getting tested next week because I was in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is very different than um, here in terms of COVID. Um, and you know, people are drinking without their masks. They're eating indoors. So just to be on the safe side, um, it's important. Um, I just wrote here that you know, COVID is the number one issue for everyone, including PRNC. Um, we discussed ideas at the retreat and other meetings. But we haven't really come up with much. But I do support a committee um, because that could help to do the research and figure out uh, what could work within the confines of a neighborhood council and make a recommendation to the board. So I think this is a good idea. I know I've asked about this in the past. Um, so I do support it and um, I'm willing to um, serve, but I would like to give opportunity to people who are not on committees first. I just think it's fair. I think if you pair somebody who's experienced with two other members who um, you know, don't have committees or maybe they're only on one committee, I think that's the right thing to do um, just to be fair to all, all the board members. But um, you know, I, I think it's a, a good idea. This is a, a number one priority, priority and we should survey the community. That's-, that's um, So I have a question for the board because I had a question from a stakeholder. Would, for on this ad hoc committee, would we be open to have stakeholders be part of this ad hoc committee for COVID? I think it's premature. I think it's a premature for the- So you would like to defer that to the ad hoc committee once it's established? Right, because I think when we brought the whole idea, the concept, I think two months ago, this is an outreach and an education and a safety, all the triangles together. The ad hoc, I, I agree with Jason, the people need a lot of outreach to understand what's going on. They need to understand the risk, the isolation, and even the vaccination. You're going to get vaccinated, you're still going to be carrying the uh, COVID-19 to others. You're not, so you're still need to, even if you get the vaccination, you're still a risk to everybody around you who hasn't got the vaccination. So a lot of this education and a lot of this need to go to the outreach. Uh, I know Jason, yourself and I had called many times about the parks. People are in the parks with no masks. They are all, I don't wanna say 24 seven, but at least 20 hours a day, people are in the park doing whatever they are doing. Uh, some people think it's uh, it's bogus that there is no COVID-19 and it's just a regular mm -hmm. influenza or something. So we, at this level, I think we should have it within the board, but I'm open to stakeholders. I mean, why not? And I, I think have... Becky oh, mentioned sorry. it in a way in which the economics, a lot of our restaurants and businesses are really going down the tube. And because of that, there is a lot of the revenue loss of taxes, and that's how I, the city budget is going down the tube too. So it's an overhaul. But I'll be, and, and personally, I think it's premature to have stakeholders, but I'm open to it. I'm not gonna vote against it. Thank you. Well, I don't, I, um... I don't really think we, we need to have a vote on an ad hoc committee. We just have to decide if we want to establish it. 
Um, Hassan. I think Mehran was ahead of me. Go ahead, Mehran. Mehran. Yes, um, actually having an ad hoc committee is very critical to our community. Uh, there has been a lot of challenges uh, uh, in our community. Business has been shut down. Uh, uh, business has been losing. Social distances is not working very well. But uh, at my end, education is the key factor of uh, how to be safe and social distance. Understanding uh, the, the risk, how to be isolated how to be vaccinated. I mean, you go and you are testing yourself in LUST, then what? What is the rules? What do you need to do? There is no communication. Um, uh, this, is a, this is actually a three pillar, education, safety, and outreach. Uh, I think that the ad hoc committee should work closely with the community members, should work with the business owners, we should have a good agenda. Our goal is to support. Our goal is to find peace and answers to them. Trust me, Jason, it's so difficult when someone has COVID-19. You go to the hospital, they don't know what they need to do, but they give them 800 milligram of painkiller. They give, uh, they give them uh, steroids. Uh, you know, there are symptoms we don't know about. Um, so I think that it is time for us to put this together to help and to support. Thank you. Thank you. Hassan? Uh, thank you, David. So yes, I do support having um, an ad hoc committee uh, started and hopefully you know, collect some ideas initially. What exactly this committee can do and in what areas it can actually be effective and do something right for the community. Personally, with the fact that um, I, I think because of obviously we cannot be out there, you know, it's, it's a question of how much contact we can have directly with any community members, including the businesses. I think the biggest tool right now we have in our possession is our uh, PRNC website and the email blast that uh, we have that Lori does a great job of putting it out every Sundays uh, or over the weekends. I think we need to have the committee, but frankly, I think we should get the ideas and try to use the tool that we have in our position, which is really the internet, the email, and blast perhaps certain messages that the committee agrees and perhaps the board agrees blast those out on a more, uh, let's say, more frequency than once a week. Perhaps we do it twice a week. And then we should also withdraw from some of the work that perhaps other NCs or in fact the city of LA or whomever has done, maybe across the nation, to solve and potentially come up with ideas that has helped the businesses to gain some momentum. And I know it varies geographically from one part of the country and one geography to another. But there must be some examples out there where people have been creative and uh, innovative in ways of you know, starting things, hopefully in the right food for, for their community. So that's my, my advice. I'm all for the ad hoc committee. I think there's a lot of good discussion that can take place, uh, but let's not forget the the biggest and perhaps the best tool we have right now, which is that um, communication tool that uh, currency puts out. So with that, um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. David? I was gonna agree with uh, Hassan. I'm concerned about what we could actually do. We're not gonna be out and about distributing masks and doing vaccines or run around doing this and that, but I think we definitely can tailor some kind of campaign online to promote local businesses and, and, and start there. I think it's a, a definitely a good approach, especially the restaurants are in the dire straits, but uh, the outreach I think is a perfect venue for us to look at whether it's with uh, the website or social media. Thank and you. I support the committee to that end. Lori? Well, we did have the outreach um, 
committee did do that program earlier when COVID first hit back in April um, to reach people and see if seniors needed any help and that kind of thing. Um, we could, you know, try to bring that back up again. It was very difficult because the phone numbers we had in our database are pretty old. Um, so we got a lot of no numbers and a lot of people just don't answer their phone any longer. Um, but so with something we could think of doing again and just try it again and see if we could reach folks, see if there's anything out there that they need. Now, the problem with that was, you know, we can't really offer them much, you know, other than a chat and making sure they're okay. And, you know, maybe sending someone over there to help them um, if they were in dire straits. Um, other than that, I, I agree with everything else that's been said about maybe promoting businesses. Um, if anybody else is out there and about in the community, I don't go out much. I stay home. I have uh, comorbidity issues myself. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't usually risk being out in public as much as, po as little as possible other than to get my medications and so forth. Um, so um, that said, I do think that it would be great if, if we could reach out to the, you know, the restaurants. We did make phone calls to them the last time uh, as well and try to figure out if there's something we can do to promote for them or, you know, if they're having any kind of specials or they want us to re we had posted for a while there, their hours and how they were changing, you know, now that everything's pretty much just takeout, we could still promote, promote them and maybe ask them, you know, we could promote a new one every other day. I don't care. Um, if somebody wants to be in charge of giving a call out to all the restaurants in Porter Ranch, um, there were about eight of them. I think that's, there's really not that many um, that are specifically to our boundaries. Um, you know, they, others weren't open yet. So, um, you know, I think we should do that. I think we should go out there try to promote these businesses, see if there's a, maybe, if, you know, if there's other promotions that they want to promote on their own, um, and let people know that they're still there. They're still needing help. Thank you. We have Judith calling in. Let me just, uh, Judith, good evening. Judith. Hi, I didn't um, raise my hand or anything, but- um, I saw you, your hand was up. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any, um, anything um, that I was trying to comment, but, um, but you know, I, I do think that uh, if there's anything you can do for the community by all means, um, that um, you know, that's worthwhile. And for the record, um, uh, when you gave out the um, the little bottles of sanitizer before sanitizer was a big thing, um, Saul and I each uh, each picked up a bottle and we still use those. We refill those and uh, we carry them around with us and think about Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council pretty much. We still every have time those, Judy. Those. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, there should be quite a few of those still left in the in the you know in the storage unit. Um, you know, if, if there was a group that would be interested in handing them out again, um, you know, maybe it's something we can think of doing. I, I don't know. You'd have right. to uh, have the ad hoc committee come up with that. Yeah, yeah so it was they, a great, it was, it was a great idea. And it was before, um, really before it was uh, a huge deal. So you were, uh, you were ahead of the time. You were ahead of the curve. Very good. Well, thank you, Judith. And thank you for attending. Uh-huh. All right. Um, so on that note, and thank you for all everybody's input. Do we have anybody that is interested in um, stepping up and being part of the ad hoc committee? I, as safety, can volunteer if I mean to be part of it. Uh, I, I get where Jason. You know, I get where Jason had. Or Becky here tonight. Right. So, so I why mean, don't we why don't we leave one spot open if Becky decides oh, Becky. she wants to participate? Um, right, David. I was just going to ask a question earlier. You oh. were asking about stakeholders, and because I pulled up the bylaws, I know we don't have Glenn Bailey here, but I I, I pulled them up, and I'll just we have Glenn Bailey. Oh, so he's there. He's always reading the bylaws for us. But um, it says ad hoc committees establish the discretion of the board president to address specific issues as needed. The chair and definition of each ad hoc committee shall be designated by the board president as needed. So, um, and then as far as stakeholders, it would be up to the chair of the committee whether they want to add stakeholders. And it just says that the term of the ad hoc committee 
shall be determined by the board president, but may not extend past the next board election um, unless it's reestablished by the board president. So I guess, you know, if you tell us, we, we pretty much know the, the point of the committee, but um, essentially the, the length of the committee would be until what? Maybe you want to four months election or well, we have an election coming up. Yeah. So that's pretty simple. I just wanted to answer that question about the stakeholders. For Correct. Chair Deerhanian. Gary, did you have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. I did have a question in my four years serving on the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council and even the, like four or five years before I was um, elected to the neighborhood council. Um, I, as a stakeholder, volunteered for many ad hoc committees, like planning of the Christmas party, uh, being on the education committee. And I find it very difficult and hard to swallow that anybody on PRNC would not allow a stakeholder to be on an ad hoc committee. Lori Choi herself just said, oh, if somebody wants to hand out sanitizers, you people don't have enough people on your board to be effective in the community if you don't allow stakeholders who are ready, willing, and able to be on committees participate. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I want you to tell them I was on the phone. I want to tell them something. All right. On that note, um, board, once again, um, and, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for Becky. Um, she knew that this was um, on there. If she would like to be part of the ad hoc committee, then um, we'll reach out to her to see if that's something she wants to do. Um, but in the interim, um, I guess, you know what, I'll reach out to uh, some of the members here, but I would just like to get your input if you're interested or not interested. So, Asad, you were interested. Miran, you're interested. I'm very interested. interested. Yes, I'm interested. Order, just. David. Jason's interested. No, no, okay, no I'm, pointing, I'm point of ordering. I'm reading the motion here. It's a discussion and possible action to establish the committee. Right. No, this is a discussion. It's we're a discussion. Still in the discussion. Okay. So, are we? If I decide, if I decide to move forward, I will appoint an ad hoc uh, chair, and then the chair can uh, choose the committee. And then the committee can choose to uh, bring on stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't, there was no motion on this. Got it. So, all right. On that note, we will, uh, I got everybody's input. Does anybody else have anything to say on this item? I'm glad we all want it, like it, and uh, we'll move forward on this. So, so you're going to establish it or is that the plan? Yes, right? The answer will be yes, and I'll reach out to see who would like to be the the chair of it. So, and then I'll get back. We'll bring it to the board at the next meeting. Thank you. All Thank right. you. We don't need to vote. We're good. <laughs> um, on that, <laughs> on that note, <clears throat> item number fifteen, we have um, allocated ten minutes uh, for five minutes for an update and five minutes for a question and answer session with uh, Miran, who's going to give a CAG update for us. Uh, hi, everyone. I am going to give you the following updates. First and utmost, the CAG uh, uh, is working very hard to, uh, on the following issues. We are going to, may, uh, we are going to uh, schedule or prepare a town hall uh, to bring further about the health study, about the challenges, uh, about where what is happening with the scientific oversight committee and where we are standing on. That's number one. Number two, I am going to bring next time, next board meeting, a resolution. And in that resolution, we are going to ask, requesting the council member uh, this, the assembly, the councilman, uh, introducing a motion to the Los Angeles City Council immediately. And our board members and the stakeholders believe that the city council should support the county supervisors in their effort to secure this vital information 
and this motion that codifies that support. We would like to ensure the safety of residents of Los Angeles and to preserve the environment. It's critical that the County of Los Angeles utilize any and all means at their disposal to obtain from the Southern California company the full list of chemicals residents that they were exposed. The chemical risk has not been released yet by the DPH and they are not been using their subpoena order. The Arisa Canyon storage facility was the worst. It's a disaster and we want to find out a resolution. We are hoping that the mayor will be, will be engaged in this process as well. Secondly, uh, if you don't mind, David, I have actually a presentation that I put with, uh, with Greg. Can I share it on the screen? Sure, please stay within the time allotted. Okay. Just one second. So do you want to- Click your to... share screen at the bottom next to where it says Q and A. Excellent. Yeah, Harry. So this is, uh, this is actually uh, a presentation. Greg and I, we work together. This is a quick presentation. And if I miss something, Greg can be part of it as well. I will, you already received this if I'm not mistaken. This is talking about the community that the health study must be community centric, scientific based and absent from all political influences. We do have a challenge on our scientific oversight committee. Two, we have very serious concerns that has we've been challenging in the last five years. And we don't know and what we need to do else. One of them is the chemical list. There is no subpoena of the SG or explanation from the county. There is a petition available right now going. If you go to change.org, Alisa Canyon chemical list. There has been scientific evidence bins of materials from blow outside. Nothing legally is preventing the destruction of this evidence. 31 bins has been removed in 2016 and was no details. CAC members were asking from the DPH to give at least the outcome of that step that they took and we have nothing. The CBC study, it's important for us to follow with Dr. Nordola. There has been highly concerning findings. The fugitive emissions, fire source and mutation, we have done nothing. We should come together and put a task force how we can work on this. The hysterical cancer register study, there are many members and family during the gas blow, they have cancer happen. And this cancer has a very negative impact. This is the cancer study. If you just look out to the layout, look how terrible is it? This is the proposed cancer study as well. The county wants to compare Portage to all LA County, and that's not how it works like that. We have poisons, we have chemicals. Where are they? Also, this is the foundation health study by CAC. You have chemical risk exposure by January 21, 16%. CBS study 14%, the vegetative emissions 14, cancer study 9%, missing evidence been 6%. The community server server results was 2%. And if you remember, uh, uh, Lori, when you put that survey out, we received better attention. We received good response. The the survey that went by the DPH was zero. They did outside of our community. 
They went to Granada Hills. They went to North Hills. Why? That's not how you do a, a survey. Uh, we are going, we are working together. We have our CAG meetings. I recommend and I suggest that you all come and attend. Our first meeting is going to be on Monday, January 25th at 6.30. And DPH and we will send you the link so you can attend. We are working on the CAC town hall. We have, uh, we are going to work on a town hall and we are going to bring it. And we, I will work through the right channels on, on the PRNC to get to the support. That's all, right. all I have on my end. Sorry, right. can you send me this? Can you send me this presentation, please? Yes, I will send it to you shortly. Thank you. And also, Greg is on the other line, I believe. Oh, Shall I bring uh, Greg in? So, are you yes, done please. with the presentation? Yes, and bring okay. Greg. Okay, so go ahead and unshare this. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and filter questions. Is we running? What? what did you do? Sorry. Yeah, hey, unshare this. So, you need to share your uh, document back, the agenda. Click share at the bottom. Mr. President? One yeah. One second there. Yes, go ahead, Jason. Um, since um, Craig is our representative along with- Yeah, I'll bring him in. Can we allow him to speak first um, in case- Yes. Okay, yes, yes, so Jason, yes, yes, yes. Jason, we're gonna, we're gonna filter questions now. Um, we've, already, we've already had a presentation. I've already spoken to CAG. They understood exactly what we're going to do. And so we will filter questions. We're not going to have any further presentations. Mike Benedetta, you've been waiting. Mike, go ahead. Yes, how are you doing? Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Good evening, Mike. Right. Well, first of all, let me start out by saying uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. And, uh, I wanted just to tell Moran, great presentation. Good job. Okay. And I uh, apologize for not being able to get on quicker. Uh, but I also wanted to, if I may, uh, piggyback on what uh, Lori said about the businesses. I think the outreach to businesses is an excellent idea. But when you call them up, if I may make this suggestion to get their business hours to each individual business, and if they are doing strictly pickup uh, or, or deliveries or, or what, that would also help uh, the community as well, having that information. So that's about. It. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. We're we're really trying to focus on what's what you had questions for the CAG. I know you're part of the CAG, so yes. I was just looking for for questions. But thank you, Craig. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I would have liked to bring the presentation back up. There was a few things that were uh, critical. When, when I spoke <laughs> um, to you guys the other day, Craig, I uh, one of you, we Moran's going to give the presentation. Now we're on a question and answer, and I'd like to stick to that. So if you'd like to formalize a question to get your point across to Miran, let's move in that direction, please. <laughs> okay, David, we had, a, we had a horrible miscommunication. You know, I'm really glad that you guys are worried about the, the COVID thing um, and you, you want to do some things. The, the, the question I have is... Greg? Okay, you muted me and now I just unmuted. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. So um, I'm, I'm pleased to see that you guys are so anxious to do something as a community, as you know, localized community about COVID. And it, it's very difficult to get your hands around it because it's such a obviously a global issue. The, the, the blowout is very localized, very regionalized. And you guys have an opportunity to really spearhead the communications to the community. Uh, I'd like to get this information out, this presentation out to uh, to all of them, Laura, if you want to send it out, that'd be great. Uh, uh, and if we can get some representation on the PRNC to attend our, our meetings, uh, I think that would be very helpful. We need the PRNC to back the CAG because the thing that Mirad said was percentages, that's not right. It's months of delay. We've waited 16 months for the chemical. Hey, Craig, list. please stick with me. I We're in our question and answer session. Okay, I, I so why, why don't we... Go, we'll go ahead and push it out to the community. I'll be happy to answer any questions they have. Okay, well, so that way Ron's you get what you be, want. The way we're doing this, Craig, and 
Please yeah. understand. We run as the. I'm really, I'm really struggling with how to understand this, David. I really am. Okay. Let because that presentation did, did not convey what it was supposed to. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Presentation. You okay. just picked it up. Go ahead. Okay. How do you want to handle it? He's our representative. Thank you, Craig. You have I a have question? A question. You have a question. I have a question. I have a question to both Mehran or Craig, whichever knows the answer. From DPH, have you received any data of any kind at this level or no data at all? No data. They have nothing, uh, Esa. They don't share anything with us. We okay. are on a yeah. dent end. We've been with and them 16 months, 18 months, and it's, uh, they don't give us anything. OK. Thank you. Patty, Ron, uh, so do you have a question? I agree with me, Ron. We, uh, we ask for things constantly, and we get, uh, we get the nod of the head, yes, we'll get back to you, where they do not get back to us. Thank hey, you, Craig. Yeah. Currently, Patty, I'm, go ahead with your question yeah, for me, Ron. Well, currently, I'm working on um, my piece for Knock LA about ELISO in, in 2020, and a big portion of it is the CAG. All these issues, they all should concern everyone. The cancer study, um, the important fact is the part about the LA County, that's going to be the control group. How can it be the control group um, when it's, uh, there's so many gas and oil facilities spread out. So they want to compare Aliso to say an area that also has oil and gas when it should be some area far away where there's no oil and gas. So. We're very frustrated, and that's the word that so we Patty, want to know. Patty, what we're doing is a question and answer. I know, I know. Can you but, formalize but, a question for me, Ron, so he can respond, please? This okay, is the well, way it was set up. Okay, I'm sorry, but we are okay. frustrated. No, I get it. I get it, but there's a way you can ask the question so then Miran could facilitate that answer on behalf of the CAG. Well, we would like to know how, how we can get everyone involved, get the community involved, so that we, they can back us up. That's probably my question. That's a Sorry. great question. Miran? Sure. Uh, look, uh, one way is to do a town hall. Next, uh, we need to do a better outreach. We need to do a press release. We need to, uh, to, re to reach out to all other community members. We need to tell them what is happening. Outreach is the key in this, in this, uh, in this uh, situation. Uh, the town hall should be under the CAG. It should be under our community. The previous town hall by the DPH was not successful. Uh, I was un unable to ask uh, questions. The, the, the WebEx they had, it was not successful. There were many community members, they were unable to get on the, on the, on the town hall. Uh, that's why the town hall is one way to walk will bring experts, Dr. Nordora and his team at UCLA and CSAM to work together on sharing the information. You know very well, Patty, that DPH is not helping us. Point. They don't do anything. It has been very difficult. It's a dead end. Uh, it's embarrassment. They need answers in our community. I agree with you. I am with the idea of the town hall from the first day but it needs to be done correctly to do the correct outreach. Thank you very much, Miran. Um, we have Jane Fowler, question. Jane, please. Jane. You unmuted me. Oh. This is Brian. Hold on, Brian. <laughs> Jane, are you there? Well, I'll tell you what, Jane has a question and um, it, it's a great question. And Jane's question is, um, where did the spirit to? She wants to know where the bins, where the bins went. Iran? Yeah, the bins, we don't know where the bins, they, they said they removed it. And uh, uh, DPH, they didn't report it. They had a plan that they are going to move it. That never been reported. And so what is the CAG's position to try and get that information? 
David, everyone on CAC is trying to reach out to DPH and asking them, this is what we need. This is our standby. This is what we are asking from you. Those bins are very dangerous what they did. This is poison. This is the pollution. It's not healthy what they did. Okay. Brian Allen? Writing a letter to DPH might help. Writing a letter to the governor might help. Writing a letter to the county might help. Well, we might doesn't work. We needed, we, I'm hoping that the CAG and the Port Orange Neighborhood Council, uh, you know, we can work on maybe reaching out and making a stronger presence and demanding what we want. And, you know, now with our newly uh, formed electives, um, our congressman and our assembly per, uh, woman, maybe we really need to get the, get them more involved and get their um, input. Brian Allen? Yeah, David, I, I, uh, I apologize out front for if I say anything that is offensive to any, for anybody, yourself included. But I, here's my question. The, the fact is, as a, as a CAG member, the fact is that the one area in this city that should be uh, dedicated to the CAG is PRNC. And that dedication means that you might want to uh, push beyond what you think is normal protocol for the NC. And my question is why? Why are you shutting down the communication? Because it is the information that we as a CAG members, all CAG members have to provide. There's new information, there's new data, there's old data, and all of it needs to be understood. And to shut anybody down, especially one of your two, one of your two representatives, you will have two, not one, and you should allow them to make their statements you should be begging them to make statements because it is their information that is going to give the community what it needs to know. And I am appalled that we are not allowing that communication to go forward because of a protocol. That's well, my question. You can, Brian, you can be appalled, but that's not, we're not doing that at all. As a matter of fact, we, the discussion was to have a presentation um, by, by Miran, who is the CAG representative for the Port Ranch Neighborhood Council, we were going to uh, extend a question and answer. So we're not we're not shutting it down by any means. As a matter of fact, we're opening up. So I appreciate your input, but that's not a correct statement. But thank you. Uh, I disagree oh. with you because you are not allowing information to be presented here. I think, word, it's, I, think I need Brian? to remind everyone on the Port Ranch Neighborhood Council that you have two representatives that you unanimously voted in. And I am one of them. Craig, and we're at a, we're at a, in the discussion, and I'm not going to get into Craig a debate is, with you by any means. Oops. You know what? This is done. Thank you. Mike, David, Mike just Benedetto. To... Mike, did you have a comment? Uh, yes. <laughs> are, are, so are you done with uh, CAD questions? No, we're so okay, we are. Okay. We have established a question and answer so, session okay, with the so community. Miran, would you agree with the following that what you're really upset about and what is most disappointing for the CAG is that as as one of the uh, six founding members of the CAG of the neighbor councils, uh, we all went into this and we told public health that this is better be a meaningful health study. You're spending $25 million on this health study and we represent our neighboring councils and we need to, to have the ability to converse with them. We represent our neighborhoods and we're not gonna do anything that is not gonna represent them per se. And to have a meaningful health study, they need to come clean on all this. And would you agree that they have not done that? And that's what the problem is. Yes, and I want to be very, very clear to all of you that Greg and I work for PRNC very hard. We both work very hard and every other member on CAC, they work very hard. 
and Craig and I, we will bring motions to the PRNC. Yes, DPH, the, the health study is not going anywhere. There are no results. I agree with you. You, I, and everyone, we have not received yet any answer. And DPH is playing in their la la land. It's, it's simple. What can I do? What else I can add? I agree with everyone. I agree with all the statements. But we need, to, I, we, I want to put a, a more force in order to accomplish the results to the community. They need to know that we need to find a way after five years how we can provide the results of the health study. I want to know what is the chemical list. I want to know what is the uh, cancer study. I, I, I totally with you. I totally with everyone. The community needs answer. This has been a poison impact on everyone. It has been, it's been very challenging working with the DTH. We've been all working for over 16, 17 months. We have no answers. We need to start to think about a different platform to hit them back, but we need to do it right. Mara? Thank you. Yes. Lori, yeah. Lori, hold on one second. Hassan was before you. Hassan? Um, David, I, I have some concern about this whole CAG and Department of Public Health relationship and, you know, what basically goes on. And uh, no one's fault. I know both um, uh, Craig and uh, Mehran are working hard. And of course, there are other members. Um, there seem to be some confusion, frankly speaking. I mean, I'm, I haven't been part of any of these meetings. I've been reading some of the uh, notes that they have posted on the website. I mentioned it to you earlier today. And in fact, some of the meetings are not posted. The last one for CAC, for example, posted is uh, back in July. So, Your Honor, are you listening? My question oh, is, thank you. My question oh, is to said. CAC members who are on the line, yeah. what do you want PRNC to do to help you to get you to the next step? Mm -hmm. and prepare a list of items that you would like to know more and what has frustrated you guys and bring it to the next meeting, present that to the board, and we actually make a motion. We want to go forward with getting a letter together or some list together, send it to city officials, you know, state officials. When Assam was around, you know, we had done a lot of these things. And uh, frankly, we haven't done a whole lot last several months due to COVID or other things. Um, I think we need to relook re at our approach because myself as a, as, a, as a stakeholder, not even as a board member, looking at this, I feel like we are just going around a circle and uh, grinding our own wheels here. Not much is getting done. I don't know, um, you know I don't wanna blame anyone but there may be a strategy of, we are not doing something right. We are not pushing on all uh, different angles to push this. And obviously from the other side, maybe we are not getting the right level of information or cooperation or both. So that's a question. Can we get some list or some something from you guys by the next meeting so we can actually discuss what is the problem? Because everybody is frustrated, but I don't really see a structured question that we can hear, discuss, and answer. So Hassan, it's a very good question, and I agree with you. What I am going to suggest, Craig and I, we will bring you a letter to officials to next meeting to get our voice heard on behalf of the community. That's number one. Number two, uh, the CAC members and ourselves would like to put a town hall and invite officials <coughs> like Dr. Nordora and others to discuss about the, uh, the, what is going on. Third, it is important for us to all agree to bring a resolution and a motion. A neighborhood council and PRNC has a very strong voice in our community. A resolution going to the officials, to the city officials will open the dialogue. And Hassan, you are right, DPH, they don't 
update any meetings. The, what you are receiving, we, we are receiving the same, nothing else. Uh, uh, the, the newsletter they sent, it's, it's, uh, it's the same newsletter. It's a copy and paste, nothing new, no update. You, I want, we all want to know what is going on. But Craig and I, we will put together this letter. We will put together also the town hall. We will put out also the resolution as well. Those three things must happen. And I can work with Rory on an outreach as well. You know, and I've got a question um, yes. to follow up. So when's the last time the CAG had a meeting? Uh, it was, uh, I, I, I like, I think it was last year. Okay, thank you. Lori, yeah. go ahead. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> that was going to be my question, actually. Um, when was the last meeting and when is the next meeting? I saw there was a slide with a couple of meetings coming up. And, yeah, That's why I, I asked Moran. Let me finish. That's why I asked yeah. Moran for the presentation uh, so I can help promote these meetings if, if they are open to the public. I think there was a lot of people didn't realize they were open to the public for the back, especially back in the beginning. They thought only the CAG was allowed to attend. Um, so I think it needs to be more, you know, promoted more. I will certainly I, put it in our email blast and on Facebook when I know what the next meeting is. I, uh, I already forwarded to you, Lori, the presentation at the, the one of the last pages, you will see the coming meetings for the CAC, which exactly, is that, that, yes, that's Exactly. I want to put that good. on our website yes. and maybe place exactly. it there. Yeah. Because they, don't just promote, they are very limited in their outreach. Just to piggyback with what Hassan was saying, you know, um, it's important for the CAG if they're having meetings to update their website because it looks like they haven't had a meeting going back to, I think, June or July. And same goes for the SOC. So um, just, just FYI on that. Okay, a few more questions. Brian Allen, did you have a question before we finish up? Uh, as I said earlier, I apologize if I offended anybody, but I, I think to answer Hassan's question, what we need, what the SOC, what not, I'm sorry, what the CAG needs and what I think Porter Ranch needs, and it's my opinion only, I, I hope people will agree, is a direct dialogue and discussion time to understand what is going on. If, you, if we can't get a discussion with Porter Ranch, they are, Porter Ranch is the home, home base for this. Porter Ranch took the majority hit on this. While there are people that are ill in other areas, the fact is Porter Ranch is where we go to. It is the, the place. And if we can't have an open dialogue, not a question and answer that is shut down because of a protocol, but a question and answer session, then we can't get anything done. And it is important that Porter Ranch understands exactly what the CAG is going through. And there are members of the CAG that understand most of it and are all of it. And there are members of the CAG that do not understand all of it. Now that's not, that's not a criticism. It's just a fact that sometimes people pick up more than others. And it, it's really important that you open that channel of dialogue as, as Isam was doing with budget advocates. He wanted to try to do that. I think it's even more important on this issue, that the CAG and Porter Ranch have an open dialogue. That's and all I'm trying to, to get across. Got it. Just to reassure you, Brian, that we we did have a um, uh, a meeting just the other night to establish that precedent. So thank you. Well, I right. I thank you for that. But I I tell you, I would I would criticize my fellow CAG members if they didn't follow through with that kind of a uh, a request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Craig? Craig? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know the last CAG meeting was November 23rd, and uh, the next one is uh, the 20, uh, the last Monday of this month. That's the next meeting. And we're going to post that and promote that, and we will, uh, we will attend. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? What's important? What's important to the to the neighborhood council? What do you want out of the health study? 
Well, I think the questions are going to Miran at this time. So, you know, we're moving forward. We're building the relationship that seemed to uh, be hindered. So we're trying to see if we can uh, expand um, the relationships and get the information that the community needs. Mr. Mike President, Benedetto? you have Lori. You have Lori. Oh, Lori. Sorry, Lori. Go ahead. Um, sorry about that. I'm just saying. I, I, Moran mentioned that it was supposed to be a town hall coming up, or is that something you guys, the CAG, has already decided on, or no? So I can share with you. I've spoken to Dr. Nordella, and we've talked about putting um, a town hall together. I know that Craig has has uh, talked about they have a town hall together with Dr. Nordello. So sooner or later, um, we're going to have the town hall with Dr. Nordello. Uh, the, we're also going to have the Department of Health, and there will be question and answers um, at that town hall. I'm just thinking maybe we need something prior to that, without a doctor, without the Department of Health, just to try, try to gather if information from the community on what it is they want to see happen. Make sure everybody's aware that these meetings happen, generally speaking, that the CAG meetings happen and that they're aware to go, you know, they're open to go to them. You know, I feel like there's like a lack of um, just Outreach. basic understanding of what they're, what it is that they're allowed to do. Um, I don't know if anybody else agree. I agree Let's, with you. And I agree yeah. totally with you. And maybe we should plan something under the outreach committee. And the rest of us will attend as stakeholders so that we don't violate any Brown Act or something. Yeah, we let me do that. My name. Okay. Hmm? Let me yeah. come up with an outreach plan. Okay. Patty? Just, just a quick note for Craig and Miran. The last uh, uh, minutes that are posted for CAG under the health study website is uh, July 27. So, I was trying to see what else has happened since July until end of December of 2020. Yeah, I can I can um, say that that this this is um, what Christina Vega of DPH is supposed to be putting up the monthly recaps of these meetings. She keeps being told, please update it, and that's why it's only July. It's not our place to do this. This is DPH. And by the way, I just wanted to reiterate. We're planning our own separate town hall that's going to be the CAG and the community. No DPH, but that's we're going to be meant. talking about the goals and priorities that statement that's coming out, the importance of, of what we've been talking about without DPH interfering, because that is a major problem. We don't want things filtered through them. So um, when we were planning on it for next week, but um, because the goals and priorities hasn't been issued yet by DPH. And I even emailed them today saying, what happened to it? When's it coming out? Because the public needs to have the full 30 days to comment on it. And we're being kept in the dark like so many issues. And, and again, that's why we want people to go on our website, look around. There's a lot of information if you go on the different tabs. Um, and we want to have this town hall with the community. So thank you. And Patty, just so you know, please reach out to me, reach out to Assad, reach out to Lori and, and share the information so we can put it on our website and inform right. the community that the event is happening. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to do it on Facebook and next door. And I know Lair, uh, Lori is a very a Pharisian. I'm saying her name wrong. She also is great about posting. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we um, it would be great if we can get it on your calendar every meeting. Yeah, if I don't know about it, it's not happening. That's just it, you know, and I'm not out there looking at everything. So I need somebody else to, you know, send me the information. And it's just unfortunate that DPH, who has an outreach person, she's not doing. Oop. Oop. No, Sorry. What? Okay. Sorry, <laughs> okay, sorry about that, Patty. All right, uh, we have to move on. We got, we're, it's 10 o'clock. 
and I didn't realize that the meeting got away. Um, CAG, CAG is always a, extremely important to the Port Ranch Council. Um, let's, uh, let's move forward on this. Treasure report. Yes, Jason. Um, we didn't really have anything um, paid, but oh, can you pull up the... Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to get this out of my... I should have, I should have been ahead of you there. Yeah, see. I'm trying to get this out of my way here. Um, You'll be faster than I will. Um, not much to report. We All we had are our basic recurring expenses, which is like Windy and, um, and the storage unit. Um, we had a transaction come through for, ho uh, was it uh, Constant Contact? Uh, Lori, can you look into the account and see? It was like $456, I think. I need a receipt for that. Um, oh, okay. You know, every, any time a transaction, and you have access, so you should be able to upload the receipt, right? Yeah, if I can find it. Yeah, absolutely. Just go in there and, and um, send me a receipt if you don't mind, because um, I have to upload it in the uh, yeah. system. That's how the MERs are generated. But that's about it. Um, what were we at? We were at like 31,000 or something. I, I forget. There you go, Jace. Can oh, you see it? Yeah. Uh, let me. I can't. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I have a open up my screen here. Okay. So what is it? 34,000 net available. That's fine. Just go off the ME. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> uh, got a I'm bunch lost here. For All right. Go uh, ahead, Jace. That's December 34,000. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's not the right one. Well, we haven't had any very few expenses. Through, so it's somewhere in that neighborhood. No, I have it here. I don't know where it just disappeared on me. I was relying on you. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have it. It's just, uh, I should. Um, Dutchman F. No, that's F there. G. What's G? G. Try G right there. Oh, that's the MER. Uh, but it was here. So hold on. Let me pull it. Bear with me here. I'll go to the website. Okay. Uh, do you want to just do the MER? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, actually, let me see. I, I got it here. Never mind. Treasury report. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's uh, expenses a day, total outstanding. So, there's $435 outstanding, and the available is $33,950. So, just about $34,000. That's the report. Any questions? Okay. Any questions, board? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. We got the, go ahead. We have a. Do you want to MER? pull up MER? Yeah. You have it there already? Yes. Yeah, not much there. Just um, if you scroll down, the 435 is um, storage and then two payments to Wendy. And that's about it. Uh, let's see. It looks like there's four payments to Wendy. Uh, yeah, December, let's see. There was an old one there, I think. Um, wait, why is that? Let's see. Oh, that's Apple One. One is Wendy, one is Apple One. And then if you could go up just a little bit. Yep. And then two Wendy's. I was, I think one was behind. So that would have been um, probably November, the 119. And then, no, October probably. And then um, 259. November and then December would have been the other one. Okay. All right. So um, we're doing good on our expenses. We're, you know, we were paying her a lot more before. So, so do we need, we need to ratify the, um, the MER? yeah, the December MER. Okay. You need to call a vote? Yes. Okay. Board, last vote of the night. Just to ratify the December 9th. December 2020 monthly expenditure. Um, we call the Randy. Okay, go ahead. Randy absent. I thought you said Tom. Tom. Yes. Martin. David, speak in the microphone, please. Here you. Go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Balin. Oh, we got Francis raising her hand. Francis, go ahead. 
Okay. Does somebody want to make a notion and second it? I'll make the I motion second. to approve the MER and Miran is seconding the motion. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Balin. Can't hear you. And hear you, David. Yeah. Hold on. Can I'll call the roll for you because I'm already. Right. I got it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Anybody? yes. All right. All right. Now we can't hear you. Was it Daddy? Jason. When, you, when you turn your head, for some reason, we cannot hear you. All right, I'm going to get deep. <laughs> yeah, hair like this is good. Okay, Just I, have no, I have no idea what's going on with my computer because it's lo very loud in my house. Yeah, okay, don't move. Miran? Yes. Thank you. Becky? Absent. David Lasher? Yes. yes. Thank you. Lori? Yes. Thank you. Asad? Yes. David Balin, yes. Gabriel, absent. Um, okay. Seven, four absent. Correct. Motion approves. Um, we did, uh, we have one last item uh, and that happens to be the minutes. And uh, Jason Hector has asked for the minutes to uh, be tabled. So we are going to table the minutes until the following meeting. I yeah. second on that. There are a few I second. I second. Had. I'm sorry, Jason. There are a few changes, and now we have Lori as secretary. So, um, and then uh, she'll have to get the keys for the um, store. I mean, the uh, the storefront. So the the PO box, right? PO box. Yeah, I'm working with Gabriel. Don't worry about it. I got okay, it. Okay, cool. All right. On that note, um, Lord, this has been Thank a very in interesting meeting. Um, you know what? I have one last comment. Um, you know, we've, we've established a, an ad hoc committee for COVID. I would like everybody just to, you know, take a moment and, and be grateful. Be grateful for their health. Be grateful for their family and, and stay safe. Um, and really, you know, and if you have it in your heart, pray for those that have moved on because this is a very serious matter. And um, I hope that we can make an impact in the community one way or another. But um, this is a very, it's a very hard time for, for everyone. So on that note, I'd like to uh, conclude the meeting. If anybody has any comments before we say goodbye, you survived another PRNC meeting. Thank you all. Thank you, David and everyone. Thank you. Congratulations. Good Congratulations. Good Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too.